Grosero. We got that. Grosero. Welcome to Ooh. Fate's Grip. And this evening... We started. <laughs> we started and all we were doing was shit talking. The were whole we really? Time. Oh no, yeah, no, I got no, all of me. that. It was just, no, it no, was I'm just kidding. me going, nee, nee, nee. Uh, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. No, that's true. That's true. Oh, the lighting looks great. Um, <laughs> welcome everybody uh, to uh, your <laughs> friendly neighborhood Aussie stream. Um, no Spider-Man reference there at all. Friendly. We have everybody here. Aussie, Hello? Aussie, Aussie. Um, oi, oi, oi. You look oi. weird from this angle. Oi, 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 oi. Like in the stream? No, I, I mean from sitting. Oh there. yeah, look, it, yeah. Certain angles, my nose just gets nah, huge. You look Shut great up. From this angle. So. What? <laughs> I can just see you in heaven. <laughs> yeah, I like that too. Um, episode. Hey, I just realised I can't see your face very well. <laughs> yep. Welcome to Rook's That's world. <laughs> like what's going on? Well, everyone will know by now that we've changed seats a little bit. All but uh, Thorum here um, yeah, has Thorum changed a little bit. Chair. So, uh, sorry, I'm just social distancing. Lazy. That's true. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> true. But welcome everybody. Um, this evening we've got a couple of shout-outs. Um, I think, and I've completely forgotten what my shout-out is going to be. Um, but I will throw it over to yourself, think fast. Uh, um, Emily, first to talk about. Uh, you just call me Emily. Yeah. You call me Amara. I know. I was I was deliberating in the mere wow. microseconds prior, but you go for it. Hey, I'm still looking for a place to book in my tattoo. <laughs> it's happening. I just got to find a place, and we'll be good. Um, I'll, do I'll do it. We'll be golden. No. <laughs> um, speaking of things that happened when we hit a thousand followers, we announced um, Thorum announced last week that we would be doing a giveaway. Um, so tonight we are here to showcase to you what you are going to win um, by entering the giveaway, which I will tell you how to do in a moment. Um, but thanks to our lovely friends at Meeples and Dragons, um, we are going to be giving away a dragon baggin of your choice, um, within reason, because we have a budget. Um, but I'll, I'll post up a photo so that you can see the dragon bag and thank you to Meeples and Dragons. Um, we're also going to be giving away a looking glass looking glass XL dice box um, this is a wood dice box with a glass etched um, cover that you can choose which engraving you would like you can have a DM engraving um, or your class depending on what you're after we're also courtesy of Kraken Dice giving away the biggest set of dice that we've ever given away in this set Thora please hold up two Ooh. Titan D20s and also an entire 14 piece set this set is sold out this set was very difficult to get um we were very lucky we got our hands on it just as it came out preston is really jealous because he tried to get this set and he couldn't so um if you want to disappoint him make sure that you enter this competition <laughs> oh, um on top of that specific to fate's grip we are giving away something very cool that Michele has graciously allowed us to do and that as that as that is the chance to name an NPC so if you win this giveaway you win a dragon baggage a dice box dice and the chance to name an NPC um, to enter that there are some things you're gonna do <laughs> those things involve following us on Twitter liking the tweet I'm going to post, retweeting the tweet I'm going to post, and then some bonus entries with code words to people who are tuning in. So make sure you tune in to some point throughout this stream and we will give you the first code word. Otherwise, thank you so much. The only reason we're allowed to do this is because we hit a thousand followers Hi. and we've had some amazing support from um, Sarah and John from <coughs> Meeples and Dragons and the team at Crack and Dice as well. So thank you. Amazing. Can oh, I jump in please, quickly? Please. How's everyone's vocals feeling at the moment? Vocals? Mm. Yeah. Can I hear some hums and some hums? Mm. Yeah. Because mm. um, apparently it's Aeon Craft's birthday today. <gasps> oh, so cool! Oh, <laughs> on a stream Aeon night! Craft. Yeah. <laughs> we I'm ready here. Do we sing it in Italian? Yeah. No, sing it in Italian. Okay, I'll sing it in Italian. You guys hum along. Okay. How's that okay. sound? How do we do that? Like, oh, you just hum and I'll sing. Is it the same tune? Same tune. It's actually the same tune. Yes, ready? One, two, three. 
Tanti auguri a te, tanti auguri a te, tanti auguri a Ion Craft, tanti auguri a te. Excellent. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. <clears throat> and thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Place. Thank you so much. Cool. That's, uh, that's an amazing couple of shout outs. Thank you for joining oh, us. I remember what your shout out might have been. Yeah, go. Is it in response to a tweet maybe we got? P probably. Go for it. Remember the tweet that we got that we were going to discuss on stream about giving advice to someone who asked for it? Thank you very much. Ooh, go yes. for it. Yes. Please, please shout out what, what their question was. Oh, right, I wasn't. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. 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 Oh, no, we're back. I remember what it is. Oh. That's right. We'll no, no, there. I can give it up. I've got it right here. Excuse me while I refresh. Please. Um, do, 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 do. Also, welcome back, NVCDM, if you're here, who hey. has just resubscribed. Oh, 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 oh. Um, NVCDM, thank you. Amazing. I have a shout out while we're waiting. Please, please. Go. Um, I'd like to welcome back our couch goblin. Oh. Make it a wee for us from in the corner. Yes. Thank you. I like that. I like that. Shiver. <laughs> um, so great. the question came through from Nick <laughs> RX Mage mm. 16, mm. and the um, the question was: Any tips for setting up a stream? I have a webcam and a mic, but I'm wanting a multicam setup. Um, I know Aeoncraft um, is in a similar boat. Yep. Aeoncraft uses, I believe, two cameras and a phone, but mm. maybe has a third camera now. Aeoncraft, if you're on, if you're on there, um, chat about what your setup is um, without giving too much away. But uh, yeah, the way we do this is um, a, a pretty powerful PC. <laughs> a couple of uh, about, I think oh, we need right. about six USB ports. Um, so you might need an adapter, um, and then we've uh, and then we've got uh, Streamlabs. So we're using Streamlabs um, to make or, or connect it all in one place, um, and then. I think the biggest challenge we've had is easily going to be the sound um, oh my gosh. <laughs> and, and just making sure that the, the volume is correct on everyone. Like uh, we're still obviously a work in progress. Yeah. Like I think my mic is, is a, a fair bit heavier. Um, we've got three different uh, brands of microphones that um, uh, that's on me. I think that doesn't make it too, too e uh, any easier. But yeah, I think, I think using those things, the PC... The, 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 the big thing you need your computer to do is encoding. If you've got encoding right um, and the, your computer can do that, then, you, then you're sweet. So, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's a bit of a nutshell. Kelly, can you tell us the difference between outcoding and encoding? Uh, yeah, encoding is... Um, uh, it's got an IN before it. It's <laughs> EN, actually. Oh, EN, right. EN. Um, <laughs> look, look, encoding, I thought, was bringing the information to the interwebs, grabbing it, taking it, Processing like tunnel. Um, Launching it into the cyberspace. Thank you so much. Um, so that's all I know. Um, Sheldon, do you have something to say? No. <laughs> <laughs> and, no with that, and with that, we'll move on. Thank you for the question. Um, we also have to shout out. Wow, you always look so surprised when I go, um. Oh, no, was, that's okay. Go. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is going well. Uh... Cool. So I also want to give a quick shout out to Dungeon Mastery, um, who, thanks to them, we were able to update our Twitch schedule, um, which has been yeah. running yeah. on the wrong time. time. Um, what? Um, yeah. Apparently. Yeah, apparently yeah. we've been starting streaming at 8.30 in the morning. Isn't that been um, amazing? It's been so dark outside that every that single week for the last six months. What I'm does so sorry. What mean? How? What? I'll it's explain just a, a you, scheduling I'll, I'll thing. Ex I'll okay. explain to you after the stream. Yeah, yeah. Um, but welcome. Welcome and thank you so much for the for that feedback. I appreciate We're it. We're still learning. We are. Anyone who did wake up at eight AM to watch us. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing effort, yeah. Yep. Oh gosh. Awesome. I'm um, also a big shout out to Sean Sunday who's in the chat. Um, hey, Sean. Sean, a massive part of um, the TTRPG community, has also created um, a player screen which I believe you own, Preston. Um, nice. You can actually get it through Meeples and Dragons, I think. Oh, I believe. Sweet. Oh, nice. Not hundred percent sure. I could <clears> be wrong. Don't hold me accountable to that. It's also um, on his Etsy, I believe. Yep. Also does a lot for the community. Mm. So um, super, super cool when you thank drop you. in here. Thank you for just stopping by. Yeah, amazing. All right. Yeah, I think I shouted it out once too. Correct. Go back and find it somewhere in one of our streams. <laughs> well, let's see how we, um, we go with this new dynamic, this new seating, and the past events of last week. Ooh. So, with that... What are we talking about? 
Yeah, we sold the house, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was all a dream. I just yeah. need to quickly say as we go please, forward, please. Um, Landon Arts, um, who um, is here at the moment. Oh my God, um, dude, yeah. It's 4 a.m. in the U.S. and dude. Landon is Landon Arts is watching us. Aeoncraft also just gifted five subscriptions to the community. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. What the no, hell? Thank what are you that. doing? Thank you. That's Every so time. generous. Thank you Every so much. Every time. Always surprising us. Appreciate it greatly, Aeon. Wild. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. We haven't even started yet. Um, you don't even know if you're going to like this 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 episode. <laughs> I hope Suckers, we've got you. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're hooked. Like yeah. <laughs> okay. So, with that, let us recap last week's episode, which was episode 44, The Return, into episode 45, Tell Narkel. So... We left off last week with... <laughs> confessing to murders. Ambitious servitude to Tiamat. And dark goals. For Iso, Archmage of House Lyranda spoke. With Gunnar, imploring peace. And with Fariso's promise of power to you, Thorum's Five, he knelt. But through mind speech, the rest of you prepared and caught Farizo off card, making your first strike in retaliation of his crimes. He then professed and demonstrated his gift of fealty, a black dragon taking shape in human stead, and you fought, the mighty acid breath burning through skin and cloth and armor. Weapons piercing scale and flesh. And Fariso, at the last, over a lava river, in a desolate and raw holds, was struck down by Amara, speaking not a word more, but taking with him Osei, companion and friend to you. And here you stand, candles and sigils of a failed spell to save her life surrounding you in darkness in silence so each of you are standing in a separate spot probably about 20 feet away from each other the dim blue lights the only source of visibility in this large cavern a lava pool even then the river flowing fading slightly beneath your eyesight and becoming dulled a smell reaches your nostrils of acrid acrid burning blood and rot as this dragon hisses with its final movements, twitching, the tail slapping against the ground, almost surprising you all as you will turn quickly to face off against something surprising again, but then stillness greets you once more. The candles and sigils around you, Thorum, have extinguished <clears throat> that power of the divine no longer there. What would you like to do? What's Amara doing? Exactly what I'm doing right now. Just staring. Just like staring, like wait, almost like waiting for something to happen. Wait, so we can fix this, right? Wasn't this our plan? What? Wasn't this? I gesture to the remarkably damaged, pretty much splashing acid and melted corpse of what was once so say and say she was too far gone and I used my most powerful magic and 
I was not enough. What do you mean? I has failed. That's all I know. Can you try again? I do not have enough. I can I can give you the spell slots. It's I can I can I can help you recover. Can you try again? It's the diamond. I don't have enough diamond. Does anyone have diamonds? No. Can I investigate? Mess up his body. But yeah, sure. Make an investigation check. We have that thing. No, like rifling through that. Stuff we can right teleport out of here away. with that thing. We can take her somewhere and maybe save her. I, I don't know. Uh, can we take her to your temple? Or maybe to your temple? It doesn't take us there. It takes us to other planes. Um, we all have to hydrate. Just so you but where on this plane would it take us? If we went to another plane? I don't know. I didn't find out if it could take us to this plane. I... I I was only, uh, Dench only told me about other planes, or not Dench, I don't know, someone told me. We can try, it can, ha we can only try. Uh, 21. 21. You go over to, I say, is still four. You start to just, I guess, you're not rifling per se, but are you seeing if she had anything on her anyway, or are you checking life signs? What are you? Um, I already know she's past gone. Certainly the magic that was cast didn't seem successful. Yeah. And looking down, there's no breath in the air. And do I know of anything of vampire regeneration when they... Prior to making another making an arcana check, yeah. what would your investigation check <coughs> devise? I'm actually looking if she's got any anything, I guess, personal on her. Okay, sure. She that would be connected no. to her specifically. Okay. You do notice um, a necklace mm. on her person, which is a very s small golden rod, probably only about a couple of inches long. And at the very top, like a, like a miniature scepter, just a small ruby. And on... Um, on the actual scepter handle, there seems to be something etched on it. Uh, a symbol. A symbol looking closer at it simply looks like a set of lips, feminine, in also a ruby color, like almost a ruby, um, yeah, uh, a ruby look. Um, Apart from that, there is also um, a piece of parchment scrolled up. Mm. Just checking as well. She also has about 72 gold pieces in uh, total. Yeah. Oh. I'll take the necklace. That's not just like rip it, just delicately. Um, Are we watching you like... Grave rob? Not rifle, but like take things? Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I'm in plain sight. What are you doing? Um, and I'll grab the scroll. I'm just yep. Rook, to you. Rook, what are you doing? I'm ignoring it for the moment. Okay. Um, and can I make that icon check? Yep, go for it. So you're you're wondering more about the vampiric side of. Uh, yeah. If there's any, if there's any regeneration from. Okay. Yeah. 
So regeneration of her, of vampires in general, things like yeah, that. Like anything like with red. Soil and if they're taken back. Okay, sure. Go for it. Um, Arcana? Yeah. Uh, 17? You have read that vampires do regenerate by regenerate their health while they're alive or while they are still breathing I guess yeah from biting and drinking the blood yeah and it it's interesting as you remember that or as you recall that information you remember that it that bite and the drawing of the blood that I say they did sort of weaken you a little bit mm. made you feel a bit lethargic looking down at your hand again just instinctively the wound is still open yeah but you've got quick uh, constitution so it is it is drying up it's it's clotting there's one bit of information that you recall every vampire that you've read about has a coffin a place where their bodies if dead can regenerate but what usually happens when that occurs is some something something happens between the death of a vampire and a rebirth of sorts but you can't quite remember what something has to happen in in that time but you just can't remember what you read um Amara what are you doing have you still got the scrolls? What scrolls? The prophecies. Yeah. Well, I don't have them. Whoever's carrying the bag has them. Gunner has them. Have you got the prophecies? I guess so, yeah. I've catalogued the bag and everything in them. Wasn't she connected to them as well? That's when we originally picked her up. I thought that the prophecies were really vague and self-fulfilling. Just a hunch. Come closer with the prophecies and see if any of them have glowed like they have around the others. Okay. Take the bag off. Open it up. Reach in. Grab one of them out. Hold it near her. Okay. As you hold the prophecy out towards you just taking a, a random one and yeah. yeah a moment passes where it simply is in your hand and the other where is the other at the moment are you holding it no they're still in the back yeah they're all in his bag the one even the one that you took from it's it's the same it has the same insignia it's the same parchment and it glows and you notice straight away that this is perhaps another. What? what? Both scrolls. Both scroll. Both, you have he a scroll. He found a scroll on the body. Yeah. On her? Yeah. Oh, right. Sorry, I missed that bit. <laughs> Both scrolls start to glow. This dim light of blue and white. And, and as, you, as you do sort of investigate it a bit more, it, and as Gunner did held, held it uh, out, same ribbon, insignia. Is it glowing because it's near her or because I'm holding it? I'm unaware. That's a good <laughs> observation, though. It might not have anything to do with her. Yeah, take it. I'm going to walk away from her. Do they stop glowing? They're still glowing. You make it to the bridge, the foot of the bridge, and they're still dimly glowing. I'm going to place the one that I pulled back out of the bag in the bag, and I'm going to open the other one and read it. So the one that the one I guess was on yeah. Jose? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to head towards tomorrow. Sure. <coughs> As you are all watching this progress you suddenly see gonna open up 
this piece of parchment that's glowing slightly from your vantage point you don't you didn't really understand that conversation but as you open it you blink once and then darkness and then a tunnel and then a beautiful beach opens up to you seagulls in the distance it's evening and you can see behind you as you turn a beautiful full blue moon and other familiar looking planets and lands far far away from you the shore is almost silent but there's a very small breeze that drifts the wave onto very small pebbles it's a beautiful white pebble beach almost pearlescent and it glows with the brightness of that rock in the sky and you hear a piano it sounds like a piano, piano initially but then there's simply one note that continually plays and it taps and you can hear that tap as the note replays again and again a low note in front of you is simply a forest but beyond an enormous bastion one that never you've seen alike even grander but more foreboding than the one in Sharm the citadel and as you walk closer you suddenly enter the tree line but then just almost trip backward as you see bats scurry around you making a screeching sound and you take a good look at one almost as, as, as a freeze frame as it goes through red glowing eyes fangs huge wings about three meters wide and it flies right by you can feel the breeze pass you and as you blink to try and get that image away you see a single old female with a black long cloak fanged teeth wrinkles and these white orbs as eyes striding towards you hello it echoes your voice throughout this environment where it normally shouldn't do we hear gonna say hello no all you see are two small hands and a frozen gunner for a split second give her back what's your name squinted eyes as she reaches out towards you her hand ridiculously long and elongates becoming stretched out and you can see this this environment just get close to you as she stays where she is and then she smiles and says she is ours and we will consume her And you see yourself back in the cabin. And you feel your face instinctively because it's profuse sweat. <clears throat> I approach Mara. And I'm not really looking at her, but to the side, put my hand on her shoulder. And um, yeah, with the other hands. Hand over the place of her face, or hand it outwards for you to take. 
gonna say. say. Jose. And Jose. <laughs> Just low. If anyone's really wanting to listen, they can probably hear. Um, I know you were fond of Jose. I'm sure she would have wanted to have this. I don't know if we should take anything off her. It may seem that way. But... There may be someone who wishes to know that she's passed. Outside of us. If this trinket... has anything to do with her upbringing with the pirates and the Lazar principalities... I'm sure someone will recognise it. You carry it with you. There has, to, there has to, there has to be something else we can do. I wish you, you, Gunnar, I, you can't do anything. I, mean, I just shout that out. Sorry, I don't always put that. He just looks at you, kind of like bewildered. Amara, there is a chance, but I don't know enough information to piece this together. The chance is not good enough. We can take what we can of her body. And if we get back to the the soil from where her coffin resides, which we know where she came from, there may be a chance to bring her back. This is going to be a long journey though, and one that will need to be pushed to the side for the moment. I didn't want to come here. I said that from the start. I said I didn't want to come here. We were all in that room. I stood there and I said, we should not be going here. We're being sent to die. That might be the case, but we're all- And here we are, and someone's dead. And Farizo's betrayed us, and now we're here, ready to die. Exactly what I said. And nobody listened to me. I stop you there, if I can. Ready to die? I'm not. I'm not ready to die either, and I wasn't ready to die when we came here, and I wasn't ready to lose anyone, and we've just lost two people, Rook. Then for a say, we should press on and live. Is Gunner look okay, or is he still kind of... Make a perception check. You're a bit, of, you're a bit away from him. Um, that's, a, that's a five. A five? You saw him open the, this scroll that was glowing. You did see the glow. He's now simply still holding it. I'm going to slowly start walking back towards the group. Um, slowly folding up the, the scroll mm-hmm. I'm not going to put it back in the bag um, I'm going to stop when I get to the group I'm assuming we're all, they're all close to Ose yep. and sit down on the ground place the, the scroll in front of me close my eyes and it takes 10 minutes to do this so feel free to try and interrupt me but I'm going to start casting um, scrying. Yep. So I'm going to, in a similar position that I have in the past, with Amara, with with any kind of meditating that I've done. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm gonna hold this scroll, and in my mind, I'm going to focus on that woman mm-hmm. that I saw. Um, so I haven't technically met her, but I have met her. So I don't know whether that will apply to the, you can decide, apply to the um, the saving throw that they'll make. Um, um, Look, give, give me both. Give me the one if you have and the one that you haven't met her and then I will roll a So if I've heard of the target, they get a plus five to the save. Um, if I have met the target, they have, there's nothing. It's just a straight roll. Um, if I know the target well, then they have a negative five. Um, if I have anything of theirs, of theirs, um, likeness or picture, possession or garment, body part, etc., that that can also add to it. I might also just place a hand on Ose as well, thinking that there's a connection between this person and Ose, um, to see if that helps. And you're simply um, seeing if you can find this person. Yeah. And watch them. And yeah. you watch or listen, is that right? Both. You, so you can do both with the scrying spell? Okay. Yeah. 
So what's your DC? 17? 17. It's a wisdom save of 17. Um, if, yeah. Anyway. And I, yeah, I've got those modifiers. Thank you. Does anyone stop me? Or try and say anything to me? No? I'm, I know what spell casting looks like. I'm going to take out my water skin and leave it next to you, though. Because I'm <coughs> concerned about your well-being somewhat. You look pretty fried. You shuffle. As you go over and do this spell, you find yourself a little bit... Uh, stuck by <laughs> the thick webbing that's still on the ground. And it's actually takes you a bit to get there but you do um, you've got this sticky silk all around your knees down to your feet and it's cold and uncomfortable but you do start that spell as, as with each of you you do find that you are apart from yourself Rook you find yourself not having no issues with this terrain but Amara and Thorum, you find yourself a bit embattled by the silk as well, the webbing underneath your feet, and it's f- finding it tough to walk through. Quick shout out to Sticks and Stones, who just subscribed for the third month in a row. Thank Sticks you. and Stones, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you, <laughs> Sticks and Stones. Hopefully, you're enjoying us. Yeah. Um, so, are you. Has Gunner finished scrying? No, Depends it takes on, 10 minutes. Okay. It takes 10 minutes. Well, I'm going to. Um, Say we should wrap her body up. Do what you want. Can I, out of, with that arcana check, yep. is it just a piece of her body that needs to be taken there or the whole, as much as it can? You're not sure. <laughs> Wait, what? What did you say? You're not sure as to if there is a body part or if there's some other element to v- the vampires in general that has to that has to happen yeah your best guess is all of her <laughs> yeah but you're not quite sure as to what that means okay um, yeah you've seen fifth yeah a two <laughs> fingernail uh, Amara this is probably the only chance that we have to say that do we do this or you say you're a piece now? We should have saved it before. Shouldn't have even been shouldn't have even been here. Don't blame yourself for this. I'm not blaming myself. I'm not blaming myself. I'm so fucking sick of losing people. I know it and kinda like punch pro in the shoulder. Yeah. yeah, let's no, go get I'm, to the body. Yeah, let's let's do that. But are you do you still have your hand on the body while you're casting the scrying spell? Oh. I'm gonna wait for Gunner to finish spell casting before I do anything. Oh. Approach, but yeah. outside arm's length. Yeah, okay. not to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is Stay anyone else doing anything? Stay where I am. Yeah. Okay. Did you take that angle? If you're fucking talking about wrapping up her body, I'm definitely taking that amulet off. Okay, cool. So you, you grab the necklace into your grasp. So if no one else is doing anything until Gunner finishes, I'm just then, standing by myself. Okay. Um, I mean, I've got a healer's kit. Can I wrap myself up as best as possible with that? Yes, you can. Um, it doesn't define a heal role or diamond roll. A healer's kit, if you don't have. Um, any feats to help you through yeah the healer's kit can stabilize stabilize okay. so it won't help you regain but it might help out with I guess making sure nothing bleeds anymore okay I'll just look fancy and catch cool. up acid burns so I see him <laughs> using like a bandage <laughs> and acid burns I'm like hold on wait <laughs> let me help you no bandage is fine man <laughs> got some duct tape here it's fine um, and at third level, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds. Cure plus Wounds, third level, yeah. At 3d8, plus 3, um, plus... Make a big boy. That's... Okay. That is 
is eight points. You take that. <laughs> yeah, I rolled uh, two, a one, a two, and a three. Wow. So as you're bandaging up, you already feel the hand that oh, you're bandaging great. Um, <laughs> healing up. <laughs> But the power of Thorum is familiar to you, and yeah. you, do, you do feel that healing power um, into into that limb. And gonna almost, and you you're aware that you, the the spell is quite a long one to speak and to cast. And as you as you finish the last sentence, once again, but through your own spell you you are transported into a a graveyard looking down in a mist of gray and almost an endless field of tombstones and crypts some in the ground, some in rock surrounding. Some look like they've been dug up and whatever valuables robbed. You see skeletons still that are around, probably five or 10 of them that are just scattered. Bits of bone here and there. Not a very well kept place of peace. And you watch as walking over to a crypt in particular a large stone mausoleum that goes down into darkness is the same older woman with a two other cloaked figures behind she goes down into this place are they speaking to each other they're silent currently does your spell allow to follow it follows the person I'm scrying on and how long does it last for? 10 minutes as it continues down your your vision follows into darkness for a moment but adjusts immediately via the spell and you can see as though you're in darkness or you're in bright light sorry and about three stories of sheer black rock of a singular staircase, only five feet wide, enters into a massive hall where there are about eight coffins. Well spaced out, about evenly, about maybe five meters across and five meters up. All but one of them are open and you watch as this trio walks towards one that's on the far top right hand side of this room. You can see chandeliers, about three of them lighting this place up with either magical candles or just candles. And as this more elderly lady that you see goes over to one of, this, uh, one of the open caskets she looks in and you simply hear her say one thing for silence takes you again and that is we await you child can I see in the can I see in the coffin it is empty are there any distinguishing features of the coffin are there markings looking down and around The lid is on the side, unbroken. The wood is made of a beautiful light uh, brown with, with streaks of white in it, almost like fungus, but varnished <coughs> over. And there is a name on the side. It simply says daughter. Silence takes you. And for the next while, until the spell ends, 
Not a single word other is uttered. They just stand there staring at the coffin. And you are taken back out into the cabin. And it was like the graveyard, it was um, grey, overcast, or just it was night? It was night. How large is Corvair? Like, are there different time zones? Is it going to be like light on one side of the continent and dark on the other, or...? It's large enough that there is um, probably about an eight hour difference between one side of Corvair and another. It's like Australia. Okay. And I know that we're in the more hold somewhere, but when we left, we were in Greyland. Yep. Correct? And it was... It was afternoon-ish. Oh. Okay. oh, no, no, sorry. It was, it, was, morning, it, was it was morning. It was morning. Okay. Which would then... We would have jumped ahead maybe, what? Four hours-ish, yep. approximately? Um, probably a bit more. Probably about six or so. Okay. So it would have been like... Probably mid- a- mid-afternoon. E- mid-afternoon by the time we got to Morahalds. Yeah. How long have we been here, if I estimate? Ah, uh, minutes. Really? Yeah, probably. Like less uh, than an hour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Less than an hour. So this place, if it was night time, has to be further east. <clears throat> that's, that's certainly an observation that's accurate. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I know this isn't the best time to have long conversations about what we need to do right now. But I I just looked at the scroll that Osei had and it took me somewhere I'm not familiar with, beaches, forests, and there is a woman who I'm pretty sure was a vampire as well who knows Osei. And she spoke to me, requesting her return. Her return or her turn? Her return. Did you see a coffin? I look at Rook. Having heard what he... Well, after that, I felt a little bit off. I... I realize now that I've seen her, maybe I could find her myself. So I scried on her just then, which you saw me doing. And I found her in a graveyard, a desecrated graveyard, with a giant mausoleum. She was with two other people I don't recognize. They walk down into this crypt with eight coffins, Mm -hmm. eight coffins, all except one were open. And they approached one of them, one of the open ones, and written on its, uh, on on the lid, I guess you would call, I don't know if that's the right word. Um, It had daughter written on it. And this woman said, we await your return, child, to the empty coffin. And this was in the same area of where the beaches were? were it, this, was a, this was different to the vision from the, from the scroll. I actually saw this for real. That was, that was real life. Um, but if I'm correct, it was nighttime there. And it's probably late afternoon here, so it has to be further east of where we are right now. Wherever that graveyard is. DM question. Mm. Speaking, I know in a tavern in Shan, I spent the evening talking to um, Osei about the Lazar Principalities. Yep. Um, would there be anything that I would be able to further concrete to understand from what Gun is telling me that Lazar Principalities is to the right of where we actually are 
Yeah, you got that idea. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you, you know Corvair pretty well. Pretty well. If you, and, and actually, make a survival check for me. Do I hear all of this from where yes. I'm standing or am I far enough away? It's a fair echo in this room. Uh, 13. And 13? Yeah. Yeah. You, you know that looking around the dwarven architecture that's remaining in this place, you're, you're somewhere in the Moral Holds, definitely. So you'd imagine that you are um, fairly close to where your destination should have been. Yeah. And that means that you know where the Lazar Principalities are. Um, However, you know from that role that it's about the same time zone. So from that description, it shouldn't really be dark. So that confuses you a little bit. It might just be my memory of Gunner. This is the best information we have at the moment. My limited understanding of vampires is that if we can get her body to her original gravesite or her coffin I should be more accurate there's a possibility she can regenerate that I get the feeling that these people are not her friends though she said this woman's in the vision not in real life there's two of them the first one was the scroll. When, when she spoke to me, directly to me, she said, we will consume her. Which doesn't sound good. She didn't have a good relationship with them. She it's told ours. us that. She told us that. Yeah. But what if they're the only ones that can help her right now? What other choice do we have tomorrow? We don't. Other than going back to... The Sharn maybe and asking for help there. Why? What's the point? To bring her back. Death isn't the end. They may tell us the same thing. Take her back to her coffin. Well, at least then we'll know for sure that there's no other way to help her. Who's to say everyone isn't working against us? Every single person that we've met along the way. What's to say that King Boronel was in on this? He probably was. I don't think we should trust him. <laughs> Can't trust anyone. At the very least, he's incompetent. Frizo was plaguing his mind, though. and made him sick, yes. Yeah, but what kind of person... No, I'm being too harsh. We fell for his tricks. Yeah, but he didn't infect our minds. No I think he did. I think he did, Gunnar. Not mine. He made us trust him. I never trusted him. I don't trust Easy. His actions were questionable, but he made it seem he was acting on behalf of Corvair. And even in his dying moments, he believed he still was. Deluded, that is. But. The road to Kyber is paved with good intentions. That's a great quote. Yeah, I made it up myself. Thanks. <laughs> An accurate one. But like us, we need to get out of here. Pay our own road. I'm gonna pull out um, three like potions. I'll hand two to Thulrim and one to Gunnar. What What's this? this? <laughs> is that a health potion? No, um, they'll help you get your spell slots back. What? Oh, I did this once. It was really bad. Remember when we were at the, um, at the, I forget the name of it. The, the jousting, the jousting tournament. <clears throat> I took one of these and it, it really took a toll on my body. I was exhausted afterwards. It's up to you. Go there if you need them, consider, considering we're still in this fucking hell hole. My spell slots are actually okay at the moment. Link, give it to full room. Go on. I'm going to start wrapping up. I'll assist. Very respectfully. Mm -hmm. I'm going to not look. Yeah. Uh, I bring out a bed sheet from my traveling bed. Yeah. Okay. Wrap her up um, in the white cloth and. Use some of that. Use some of the uh, rope just to like bind mm -hmm. it all together. Tightly. Okay. Thorum, do you have a way of like purifying the body to make sure it doesn't decompose or anything? Can we stop calling it the body? It's 
it's not the body. This is Ose. It's not the body. It's not an object. This is a person. As you finish those words, and as you start to approach Ose to wrap her gently, you notice on that platform where the large beast had been slain that suddenly it starts to fade it almost becomes translucent the body or the platform the body the body body, yaddy 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 slowly but surely (laughs) the dragon becomes smaller and smaller and in its place as it disappears Theriso and his body dead (laughs) lies there in the same spot Rook you immediately are suspicious yeah and you look quickly and you notice that the parts of the black dragon that you've collected are no longer there you can't find them I'm shadow stepping up to that platform (laughs) wait Um, and I'm gonna is he on the ground you can see that his jaw is um and his his head is cracked open, like the like your yeah. final move. I'm gonna like hold his throat just in case he decides to fucking sit up or do anything crazy. The first thing you notice is cold. By the usual feel of that pulse and that blood rushing through that part of the body, you feel nothing. And you see lifeless eyes staring up at you. I'm going to run over to him. Did I lose my 37 pieces of one inch long obsidian too? <laughs> no obsidian for you, boy. Don't! <laughs> you did. Amara, I know you're angry and so am I. But there is value in preserving him right now. We can get more answers. And we deserve answers. Right? We don't? We do deserve answers. What are we going to get, Gunnar? I don't know, but we will get them. I have ways... I have ways of getting information. Go ahead. Can't right now. But we can preserve him. I'm sick of waiting for things to happen. Well, I'm sorry. I, I... I'm just... I'm not able to do it right now, that's all. But if we take him, we take Othay back to Sharn, we can get the answers we deserve. And at that moment, from across the lava river, you hear another sound towards that opening in the large damaged doors that leads further into the moral holds you hear a (sighs) gasping and it echoes everyone make perception checks no no I'm not telling you to do anything I'm just saying (laughs) 19. 15. 7. 15. <laughs> 14. 14. Everyone but Amara, who's still <laughs> concentrating curious. at Farisa, not really paying any attention, look over. And in that direction, you see a cape with a flame, a hissing of burnt skin skin peeled off completely of this person that's crawling 
away from the scene. This female. Malestra, I don't see it. I don't see it. Malestra oh my god! Is is just struggling as she is simply in immense Thor. pain I'm and just race over to her as quickly as I can. As quickly as I can touch her, cast Cure Wounds again at third level. Third level, alright, make your, she make your rolls. <laughs> <laughs> if you're over like 30 HP on this roll, I'm 15, this 15 points. 15 points of health. Alright, let me just punch that in. <laughs> Into a burnt corpse. <laughs> punch it in. Punch it in. You see immediately that, um, and you notice now Thorum racing over that bridge and putting both hands on, onto a burning piece of exposed bone. <laughs> I'll go for it. Anyway. Um, it's the first thing you touched. It was Ooh. it was at her ankle, and as you put your your hands on there, you feel the burning pain dissipate into warmth as your spell takes shape, and you see the skin repairing itself you can see it just uh, regenerating doesn't do a lot but she no longer appears to be shaking uncontrollably she's not Anakin Skywalker anymore <laughs> I'm just gonna with one hand pop one of those potions that Amara gave me before and just start necking that and then at the same time just <laughs> the exact same thing again okay um, you immediately suffer a point of exhaustion for as what spell are you casting <laughs> now? <laughs> Go for it. That's another 15. Okay. Fuck. As you just push that power of yeah, the divine, it, it's, you feel yourself becomes all of a sudden just lethargic from the potion's effects, but you do get more of that healing into her as the rest of her body becomes scarred but healed. And you can see the smoking of the um of that lava simply disappear and you can see there's no hair on her head you can see the eyelashes the the scarring on her face it's fairly hideous and she sort of stops collapses onto her stomach and and rolls herself over onto her back you can see her robes are simply just burnt out she's almost naked and She's, she seemed to have been carrying at that time a small bag which has been uh, whatever contents were in it has now <coughs> been left and she l- sort of looks up at you with the familiar greenish eyes Barclays she's <laughs> <Bruh. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> is that what the room says Bruh. <laughs> I look down at her and I go friend zoned <laughs> I go better <laughs> um I'm going to look over her again. I'm going to take off my cloak and wrap it around her. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to make a mental note that this is the second time in very, very recently that I've come across her dead, no fault of my own, <laughs> nothing to do with me, and saved her. Okay. Are you, are you stating this out loud? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> Loudly, just whinging the whole time. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. So noble Thor. <laughs> Does everyone here say Barclays? Yes. It, it it was a bit of a more of a rasp as you look over and see Thorum over this person. How many feet away? Oh, about 50. No, too sad to roast me. I'm going to speak in her mind. Tomorrow we need to get out of here. I'll speak in her mind. Say Barclays isn't here. What do you need him for? And I'll just let her talk back if she wants to. Either she doesn't want to or she can't as she rasps out loud again. I... I simply want to look at him. Oh, girl. Whoa. What happened? I'll say back in her mind. You tell us. out loud but please rest rest and that's what I'm trying to do I said I'm not asking you any questions 
I'm not there yet, so I'm making sure we gather Osei. Osei has been since then, yeah, um, very neatly wrapped and tied. Mm. You guys are fucked. <laughs> hey, Mbami is a very sacred person. Um, I'm it's going to start looking through Parizo's belongings. It's very respectful. Investigation check. I know, it was just funny. I just want to say this is the first time I'm ever investigating Bobby. All right. And I did it badly. <laughs> but you, get you kick it. A four? Yeah. As you're... <laughs> you did a terrible job. <laughs> you're, you're still holding his throat out of, out of a bit of contempt. Um, yeah, I'm and not with, go. with the other hand, you're simply looking at Farisa's dead face. Yeah, good. As your other hand just absent-mindedly <laughs> tries to go into pockets. Um, you don't find anything on him. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. I'm taking his cloak. Ugh, what is this? <laughs> you take this dark cloak. This what are you carrying? And um, <laughs> fold it. All right. I'm going to um, yeah fold it, weapon. and then I'm gonna um, toss it towards Gunnar. What? Say so, here you go. Farisa's cloak oh. is, is taken naked, from yeah? Amara. This is cloak oh. and is tossed towards you. This dark navy it's like over me because <laughs> it's like so big. Um, thanks. I'm gonna roll it up I'll and chuck it in the bag. We need to go. This place isn't safe. Uh, when I hear you say that, I'm going to answer your previous question, which is, I don't have any magics that can preserve her body. There are some clerics that can cast a gentle repose, but not me. And that that uh, about tracks. Yeah. In, <laughs> but we should Wait, put, you're a cleric? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should put Ose... I thought you were a warlock. ...into the bag. <laughs> As I understand it, she will be preserved in there. Exactly as she is. <laughs> I'm sorry, Thora. What the fuck did you just say? You should put her in the bag. I mean, he's telling the truth. She won't. Her body won't it's age another, or decay in there. It's another dimension. There's no time. There, there's no time. There's no bacteria. There's nothing in there. Her body will be preserved, so that when it comes time to revive her, she will be. As she was, is. Is, it, is that correct? My understanding? Is my understanding as far as I understand? You've yeah. studied it and yeah. it seems to be correct. The pocket universes that the bag of holding can hold things has no time or has just simply no time. They're not like real bags. It's not like she's gonna be just do it. Jumbled just around do in it. there with other things. It's it's like have you have you ever heard of out I don't of, wanna hear about it out of space? I don't wanna hear about it. Please, for the love of for the love of God, stop talking. Have I heard about a space? <laughs> Mate, just make a straight intelligence check. <laughs> that one? No. no. That's the way you ask that question. We need to clip that. <laughs> what? Um. <laughs> a nilly spirit. That is a three. A three? Yeah. And it's just flat. Was it a negative? No. Nope. <laughs> this wasn't a good roll. Okay, um. There's no Australia. <laughs> the the concept has reached your ears. That beyond Corvair, apart from the actual plane, other planes of existence, which you are aware of, mm. there's something beyond the sky above you. But what that is is a mystery and an enigma. <laughs> I'm gonna like <laughs> ask you to get on the other side of this bag with me and help help me with this. I can't. Help. <laughs> you okay? Do you need a moment? I just love that. <laughs> I can't help you. I, I'm. Help, help me put that. Can I investigate Frieza? Yeah. 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 yeah before, oh, he gets, before he gets... Sorry, I think yeah, we should put okay. both of them in the bag. What are you doing? He's investigating Frieza's body. She's still holding it, I think. I'm holding his body. Yeah, I'm just going to over shoulders. Give him a proper feel as well. Yeah. What is this? Yeah, <laughs> what are you holding? Um, I don't know if this falls under my Concealing investigation Karen. role. 
But I also, while well, he's doing this, I guess I can't stop well, him from investigating. I'm not going to try. I would like to check... Is he wearing gloves? Yes. I'd like to remove his gloves. No gloves, no gloves. And I'd like to check his hands and arms for any tattoos that resemble what Barclays had. Sure. Or anything close to. Sure. Absolutely. As soon as, as, soon as you take off the gloves, you have to roll up the sleeve a little bit more of his long, long sleeve uh, shirt. But he has the uh, insignia tattooed of House Lyranda. No, like the Fae. Oh, the Fae. Yeah. Oh, I see. Sorry, like, um, like the. Yeah, the gold or whatever. No. But House the House Lyranda insignia is large and prominent on his forearm. What'd you roll? Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Looking through his oh, his person, you watch as Amara takes off the gloves, but you sort of. Make your way to the again the pockets um, underneath the shirt to see if there's anything yeah anything of this. You do feel cold and clammy skin underneath underneath your fingers. Um, you did do notice on his hands as well. There are several fairly lovely looking rings. Um, uh, a couple of gold with ruby uh, rubies. You see um, a gold with a, a gold band with a small diamond in it. Um, you notice that there is a gold <coughs> ring with every single. Uh, different colored gem all the way around it probably about 20 tiny ones um you notice that he does have about 50 gold on him um and there is as well a, a small a small parchment go on so cheap <laughs> uh, a small parchment with something written on it it's folded in half guys i know they're really we are really curious but can we do this in a safer place Hearing this, I'm going to pick up both say it gently and as respectfully as possible put her in the bag. <laughs> okay. There's no um, respectful way to shove someone's body into well, a bag. I imagine I over the shoulder and I get the bag and I just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> I've got no problems pilfering Freezer. Um, yep. Osei is slowly and gently placed into the bag and it envelops her. Um, I'm going to turn to the others and say... Do we need to take a gesture? I don't really say his name. Yes. No. Yeah. Yes. To what end? Hear Why? me out. I know he is a bad person. Trust me. I don't trust him at all. But two things. One, he has got off way too easy. Killing him once, not enough. I'm not saying that we have to kill him again, but he needs, there needs to be justice. And that wasn't justice. He gets the easy way out. That's not how this should end for him. Second of all, he has more information that we haven't got from him yet, and we need more answers. Molestra's alive. She, she doesn't that. know everything. We can bring him back and make him pay for what he's done. Well, let's take him too. Make, Make him pay beyond, beyond death? death? Yes. Did we ever get the name of the Fae? She didn't tell it to us, did she? If we take him back, the Twelve can make him answer for his crimes as well. Yes, well, or we can take him back and make the Twelve answer for theirs. Something along those lines, but I agree with you, we should take him. He's a, he's a bargaining chip. Anyway, I'm gonna let them have that Chuck conversation. Him in. Yeah, I'm gonna help him wrap up. Uh, Chuck him in. But I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you from doing that if I can. Okay. What do you want to do? And I'm going to just like put my hand up and be like, give me a minute. And I'm gonna like keep holding his throat. And I'm gonna be like, hey, Faye, bitch. Frizo's dead. Come out. I think you should be careful, Amara. The Fae are dangerous. Cool. So is a dragon. Yeah, but I'm not in a good state to be fighting anymore right now. Neither am I. So let's not pick a fight. We don't have to fight. I just want to find out more from her. In a safer place, maybe? No place is safe at the moment. This is definitely not the safest place we could be doing this, though. I'm gonna... Can I start wrapping up Frieza? 
now that I've done that, I She's will let them. Okay. You, you, you can then? Yep. Yeah, straight up. Start wrapping. Um, just chuck him in the bag. Yeah, I actually. Fuck yeah. wrapping him up. I'll just chuck him in the bag. Do you just want to message me when I get off his body? Um, so it was the it was two gold bands with rubies in it. A gold band with a diamond. Fifty gold pieces. Diamond. Yeah. Fifty gold pieces. Yeah. Small folded parchment. And another gold ring with about 20 different looking jewels um, surrounding it. Um, Watching all these guys do that, I'm actually... uh, If I can make an expression that I would look like I was agreeing with Amara, I would have obeyed that and I'm checking back with... um, Maestra. Not, not to hold any conversations to be sure that she's attended to. Sure. Maybe you could give her that potion. Yeah, Suddenly, is that, that in, in character? character? Yeah, in character. <laughs> that was in character. That was in character? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah I'll give her the potion. Okay. Hang on, one question. Didn't we ever say the potion already? Just didn't know. No, you opened it, I believe. Okay. Correct. Uh, I'll roll. Um, was it a greater healing potion? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I don't have pled potions. Probably about 15 feet away. There's a small movement, like a, like a parting of web. You see a, a wrapped up body of a dwarf in silk simply move aside um, and then go on 16 HP cool no problem mark it as you watch this still form just Roll get over. shoved aside you then see what looks to be small either branches or roots just fold upward from the ground almost in the very center of the battle that you've just been in and just wrap around this body the other branches and roots also come out of this now hole in the ground as it pushes small stones and bone and web out of its way. How big is this hole? Probably about a foot by foot as it opens and this branch of very small trunk starts to rise like a beanstalk. Pass without a trace is still up just so you all know. It curls around green and brown as as it rises you see as though an a sprout in fast motion grows out of out of the earth it becomes foliage and this small tree simply erupts and as it does you see a small apple from a flower appear in far in in far, in a fast forward the flower appears and becomes a, an apple and then it withers and then you see another more fresher fruit appear and stay beautiful green sheen on it as the tree grows higher and higher and more round you notice that it is lush in a desolate place and the trunk becomes wider and wider probably a good 10 feet in in diameter and you can hear the crunching and the grinding of that of the root system taking hold and then it's nothing I'm going to cast mage armor on myself okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to drink a health potion yep <laughs> how's Melistra looking after the her eyes are resting she's breathing 
and she is blinking and simply holding her hand on her chest and just trying to breathe a little easier. You can see her also trying to perform some sort of healing on herself as well. As you can see, wounds around her and even the scars start to smooth over and a light similar to what you've witnessed or you've done. You witness this as well. I um, I guess stand in front of her to hopefully block any line of sight. Okay. One of the branches of this large tree now, about 15 feet high, moves and the others don't as it shifts away and disconnects from the rest of the almost perfectly symmetrical tree. And you watch this branch that looks like a hand grasp another branch and kicking off the rest of the trunk leaving this gape within it a familiar looking dryad with this autumn looking hair of leaves and from this bowel on the tree butterflies start to come out similar yellow and white and start to flutter around her and she's silent as she strides forward and to you. Who is next to... Well, no, is Fariso in the bag? or Yeah, you, he's in the bag already. I was bag. closest to him. Yeah, me cool. and Rook. And I it's guess in the bag. She simply stops then, about five feet away from you, Amara, looking towards Thorum, just for the purposes of her situation. Are you still near Melestra? <clears throat> um, no, I would have... I'd be right next to Amara if cool. I came up to her, the bag and you're I would be next you're to next to well, yeah. and you've come up you're pretty close as well Gunner aren't you I guess she simply stops in front of you all in the familiar giggling <laughs> that you're used to, that you're used to hearing non-existent cool. her face contorted slightly into a more sinister looking face I heard What have you done? You can see a small tear appear on her face. He was corrupted, uh, helping Tear Man. Who? <laughs> Frizo isn't. A great evil corrupted him and is responsible for his death. I don't understand. He killed his own friends. He poisoned the king. He stole. He was a murderer. Turned into a dragon. Did you know he could do that? This, this face that's a lot smaller than you remember simply moves side to side as these wide black eyes look down and then back up. You might see him again if you can help us get to Sean. I don't... I don't sense him anymore. He's truly gone. Consider it freedom on your part. No. No, it's not. He protected us. He was going to use you. He protected us too. And then he tried to use us. Asked us to kneel before him while he summoned the evil. It's not true. I Inside think. check me, bitch! No. <laughs> <laughs> He was corrupted, <laughs> but it's as I said, if um, you can help us now. I, can I do something? Just before you do, go continue. If you can help us now, you may yet see him. How can I see him if, if he's no longer with us? I can show you. I don't think I want to. 
I wouldn't want to. Do you believe us? I cannot. I cannot. Then I have to show you. It is not him. I have to show you. I'm going to place... She visibly comes back but stays. Place my hand on my mind. Um, for a moment. And as I pull away, a, um, <clears throat> like a grey thread that shines and shimmers comes out of my mind. <clears throat> it just looks like a flowing piece of string I'm using, uh, encoded thoughts. <laughs> um, and I will then pass it to so the memory is of the moment that Frizo betrayed us and transformed into a dragon. Okay. In order for her to use it, does she need to reach out and, I guess, touch it or uh, make it into her mind? How does it on her. she's looking afraid? Her form shrinks. And she is almost with a look of utter hopelessness. What is this? Um, do you have any ability to read people's thoughts or minds? Yes. Use it while holding that and you will be able to See. She closes her eyes and sh- you can see her body shake as she, with a long branch which turns into a twig with a small leaf out of it, touches the sliver. <laughs> and the sliver disappears. And she says, No! What your memory is. It is not right. My home. My home is gone. What's your name? (laughs) I'm not going to hurt you. Make a persuasion check. (laughs) This is going to be bad. The truth. I am telling the truth. Well, that's why it's persuasion, not deception. <laughs> <laughs> it's a two. Okay. I'm an intimidating motherfucker. <laughs> I'm not gonna hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. She she takes a step back. I believe. You. I believe you. But I will not say my name. I trusted him too. I still do. Then help us. We need answers. He's not what you think. We need answers. This is trickery. This is trickery. It is. Trickery of the... The evil... Queen Tiamat. He never mentioned her. He he never never talked to her. I don't think Fariza was a bad person. He was not. I more than any of these people trusted Farizo. I was as surprised as you are and probably not as hurt you've known him longer but pretty hurt by it too I can't understand what you're going through but I can tell you that This evil that's corrupting him was enough to, if he is a good person, completely overtake him. He killed someone that we care about very, very much. And I've watched it happen. It was not him. It was, it was, it was someone else. Here. 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 And she pulls out a light blue streak of a memory 
and as you grasp it, it then elongates and hovers around each of you. Take it. See? Yeah, I'll grab it. What are you doing? I grab one of my um, alchemy vials and I plug it up. Sample. Um, I will absorb it with my encoded thoughts. Okay. So. As you take the strand of blue light, in front of you the environment shifts and there's simply a small opening in a forest, a clearing. In, in the air, within a bubble of black and purple magic and nimbus hovers an enormous warforged metal wings flared long swords protruding from all limbs these spikes on the back a familiar sight the Lord of Blades is in midair and this large magical beam that connects this this sphere to the ground is being held up by a struggling Farisa and the Warforged is brought down onto the ground and then this nimbus around it dissipates and the Warforged points a, an, a forearm towards Fariso and it has a massive crossbow on it and he takes out from his other metallic hand this large bolt slams it sorry uh -huh. <laughs> slams it I'll just slam. adjust that uh -huh. I'll get that done soon slams it into the arm and points it towards him and says why should I not kill you now Farisa replies immediately, Leave. Go back to the Mornland. You are not welcome here. Your task is futile. You will not succeed. Heroes chase you, and they will succeed. And you will die your metal parts on the dirt or in Kaiba where they belong. Your queen will not save you. She is trapped, and we will make sure that she is trapped forever. And you see from the boughs of a tree, this dryad watching on with small figures of Warforged in the numbering in the hundreds around the clearing watching this enactment and your minds come back to the cavern again and this dryad continues see I was there I was there he is good he was always good I was simply there to watch for him to make sure that Behind him there are no dangers. That's what he had me do in exchange for protecting my grove. The Feywild is nothing without him. Even now, the demons attack. His guards are down. He only, only he knew. And the Lord of the Hunt. But, but that is all. Who's the Lord of the Hunt? My true Lord. One of the rulers of the Feywild. They... He got... And he needed help. So I sent for him. I sent for the Archmage. A long time ago. And he has helped... The Lord of the Hunt with... With protecting the Feywild. Without him... The Lord of the Hunt is... 
no, no more. We intend to take him to Shan and to revive him there. You still don't believe me. You're simply going to interrogate him? Put his truth against mine? What? You would rather he stays dead? We deserve answers. You do too. If his truth is the same as yours, then he will be set free. Don't! <coughs> this echo beyond the bridge again as you see a struggling Malestra now on the other side of the bridge. Slowly get up and you aid her. Please. You have a task here. Durham. The Red Death. It's still rampaging. Whatever is happening here, the dwarves, they need you. You still must help them going back to Shan. Ah! I came to warn you of him. Whatever she has said, she is, she still is his servant. <sighs> we must heal them. Take down the drow. Do what you have come here to do. When the dwarves are saved, they will muster and drive the war forged. We did come here with that plan. We should follow through with it. This creature is a liar. He would have lied to us beforehand in our first interaction. If it wasn't for that zone of truth, even now I don't believe her. Um, I... I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. What I do know is that we are underprepared. Our our entire mission here is completely derailed. And I think we need to regroup. We don't even know where we are. That's my point. The only way out might be to do this job and get out. There are many ways to leave this place, including that object that Amara has. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Never well, mind then. Perhaps you're right, Rook. Our own intentions, as good as it would be to revive Osei, must come. We must put the needs of others first. We can't sacrifice a thousand for our own sake. Thousands. The Sorry. entire dwarven race. Very well. Then we must find somewhere to rest. You are also right. We are in a very bad way and need to regain some of our strength. I suggest we leave this place. I'm going to look at the Fae. And in her mind, I'm going to say. I believe you. I won't tell the others, but I need your name if I need to contact you again. Can I whisper to Malestra? Can we let this creature leave here? Whispering back in your ear, she says, If the Lord of Blades, his ally, knows what has happened here. She will tell him. 
perhaps it's not wise. And I give him the power to speak back. And just before you do, in your mind, because this is more instantaneous. Cruita. Sorry? Cruita. How do I spell that? K R U I T A. It's only taken me 45 sessions to get that name. (laughs) Go on. I try and get another sentence out and whisper. Very overwhelmed right now. Are you able to lend any kind of support? Not even I can hear you, sorry. What did you say? We're very <laughs> overwhelmed right now. Are you able to lend any support in this? Right, okay. Uh, sorry. That's right. She's still on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got 30 plus hit points here. Um, uh, perhaps. And she just... I said perhaps is not good enough. I she holds up her my, finger. Yeah. Go on. Take something out of my inventory. Yep. I have no idea if this is going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Barclays bought this for me back in the byways. It's a rejuvenation cocktail that we had that I kept in my... Yep, cool. Then I pop it in and hope that she heals full health. Okay. As she takes a drink, you can see her hair immediately comes back. This black, flowing, <coughs> healthy, shiny hair. And this entire being, now wrapped still in Thorum's cloak, comes back and straightens immediately. This, these dark green eyes look at you. I do not know what that was, but thank you. And she points then. Oh, hey! And with that, this brown branch or vine shoots out of her finger, wraps around this dryad immediately, this taut lasso, strong, and as she, as, the, as this dryad just struggles now, automatically trying to get this, this thing off, slamming onto it, she gets flung backward. And you see this branch f- just throw her and then disappearing completely within the boughs of this tree again. And the dryad is no longer in front of her. And that's where we're going to take our break, guys. <laughs> Woo! We're going to take our, uh, oh. our 10 minute break there. Um, Good timing. Yeah. Hey, we need a code word <laughs> for the giveaway, which I didn't prepare you for beforehand. Yeah, you did. Of course you did. Yeah, I've got that. I've so, got that. So, hey, give us a code word. Uh, the code word tonight um, is going to be um, the Dryad's name, Kurita. Oh God, Corita, Corita. Um, yeah. So the spelling for that is. We'll put it on the, tw- the Twitter as well. No, no we won't. No, we won't no, put no. it on the Twitter as well. No. Ah, special. The spelling, the spelling is. K. <laughs> um, uh, U, I, T, A. Corita. That, that spelling again. Um, is. So I am about to post a tweet. It will be pinned on our profile. Um, the this competition will run for the next two weeks. Um, and we will draw a winner. With that code word, reply to the tweet and you'll get an extra entry. Exactly. And be in the running while the... Uh, <laughs> we're good, and thank you for that. Uh, and while we're in our break, I'll fix, our, I'll fix my camera because I just am too excited. So uh, now you, you actually... Uh, I didn't know that Pat Goblin, you were visible for a brief moment. So you did make a cameo in that. Um, so Ooh, th- <laughs> lucky you weren't naked this time. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> this, this time. time. All right, everybody. Uh, we'll see you in uh, about 10 minutes. It is 8.35. We'll make it 8.45. Ooh. And we're going to uh, cool off in yes. this hottest day of the Australian summer, mate. Uh, and we'll see oh you soon. God, never we're again. It, in you. <laughs> it is a lava room.
And we're back. Hey, welcome back. And uh, mm, because of uh, certain things like I can't actually see my camera when I don't actually have the, uh, uh, the, the screen on, um, it's off. So I'm just going to quickly fix that up. Ooh, 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 ooh. There you go. You look good. Yeah, yeah look great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Look, it's gonna it's gonna do. Um, welcome back, everybody. Uh, once again, I'm using while we're waiting for the rest of us to come in. I am using um, this evening these amazing die uh, these because the camera has amazing uh, focus <laughs> are from Aeoncraft. Um, beautiful gold flax, like a like a storm. I love them. Um, and they're rolling really good numbers for me, uh, so thank you, I appreciate that. And uh, if the players come back to you and, and give you some crap about that, um, tell them to come to me. It's fine. Um, hopefully everybody's enjoying this evening so far. Uh, and I think by now the Twitter um, giveaway ha it is. <laughs> has That's gone live. That was the sound of one of the... Ba -ba -ba. Oh, it doesn't... What's the name of the dice set that we're giving away? The type... Dark Matter. Dark, dark Matter. Yes, that was the Thank sound you. of one of those Dark Matter dice. Just hitting the floor. Oh. Put that up and make sure I... Let's, let's, we we're we're going to polish that up nice and... That's yep. it. And yeah, hand that back to our lucky winner. <laughs> so yeah, that tweet is live on the Twitter. Uh, so follow us at Fates Group. Like the tweet. Retweet the tweet. And tune winner, into winner. the stream some extra entries and some code words, one of which we've already dropped. So if you're watching this right now, scroll back 15 minutes ago and watch that, mm. as there should be code word in there. You can't do that, I don't think, on live. You have to come back and watch it later on. Or After catch us on YouTube. Yes, YouTube. Yeah, check out our YouTube channel. Yeah, um, watch it on YouTube. Yeah, check out our YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, why, why was it? What was it? Big awning. Oh yeah, huge job. You can turn that on the side. Oh. So, um, yeah, like I said, um, it's back on. Go on. A couple of subs. Oh, do we? Yeah. Really? Oh, hang on. Thank, Thank you guys. Oh, Thank you. So much. <coughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. Can we shout them out? Yes, Sleona. Yeah, absolutely. Sleona is back. Hi, Sleona. Thank you. For a second, yeah, I thought you said, can we so shout them out? Back and I was like, <laughs> shout wow. Shout them out yourself, but also gifted two subs to Neverending Codex and Maddie Oh, Kimmel. wow. Who, who's, oh, who's up Never Ending Codex is here. Hey, Neverending Codex. How are you? Thank you for joining. Who who gifted them? Uh, Sleona. Oh, mm. Sleona did that as well. Yeah. You're very kind. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're much appreciated. Awesome. Uh, and we'll also how you guys my dice are so pretty that I've like passed them around to a million people. Someone at work goes to me. <laughs> Someone at work goes to me. Hey, did you get any more free shit? Or oh, okay. I was like, well, yeah. I don't know why you're saying that because Aeoncraft's the only person that's given me free things. <laughs> so thank you. Oh no, Meeples and Dragons gave us glasses. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I think people at work think that we're like we're we're really we're like, like famous. Yeah, or yeah. I, I think. We I are. Mean, what, what do you guys think? I mean, we're we're, we're up there, right? We're a kind oh, of people are savage, savage garden popular. I like it. I like yeah. We are savage garden popular. I think yeah. we're more like. I feel like we're more Missy Higgins now. Okay. Popular. Oh, oh no. that's good. That's good. No, I'd say what was that one? That one American Australian Idol, Casey Donovan. Oh, definitely. We're Casey Donovan popular. I reckon that's accurate. I reckon <laughs> Thor was just like, Chambers. yeah, right. I would <laughs> take that. We're Casey <laughs> Donovan. Yeah. Yeah, 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 no. Everybody, honestly, Casey, we love you. Make us Casey Donovan um, okay. famous, huh? And then Shannon Knoll famous. Don't make famous. us, don't make us famous. Goals. You don't want goals. that. You don't want that in this, in this oh. universe. <laughs> Okay. okay. Anyway, <laughs> With we that, digress. Let, let's let's. The five is the most famous that we're ever gonna be. Thank yeah, you, the true. five. Yeah. The five. Now you've dropped your own name from it. It's true. For my own purpose. Humble. Oh, okay. I mean, Never yeah. mind then. Humility. <laughs> <laughs> the humility five. We have become more popular since dropping your name. <laughs> it's true. It's true. John the Dragon just wrote. 
rolling on the floor laughing, Casey Donovan, lol. <laughs> My yeah. favourite part about that is that he spelled Casey with a K instead of a C. Beautiful. And that, that just makes it better. Encapsulates it. Further, yeah, because yeah, that's the type of Casey Donovan we are. Like, yes. yeah. you just can't off even spell it right. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> We're off brand, Casey Donovan. <laughs> We're the home brand. I gotta listen to the music no. again. Anyway, let's, uh, oh, let's head back don't. in. Oh, okay. So, bringing it back <laughs> in. You watch as <laughs> Melestra just erupts with magic and, you, and you're holding her, Rook, and you physically see her just cave in and she just, just gets enveloped by pure exhaustion and she sort of, her entire body weight after that spell is cast is brought on you. You all watch as this dryad has been you know that she's been taken into the tree but you then notice that half of her is sticking out the other side and her and one half is embedded in the wood and she's simply still is she like Frozen or like limp? Frozen. Okay. Like taut. Okay. She doesn't look dead. She just looks. You're to find out. Make an arcana check for me because you're you just to see if you're familiar with how a, a woodland dryad. being would look when they are dead. Well, I'm only going off of what I would know of like a normal. Like a new human. Yeah. Does she look like a dead? I mean, rigor mortis, rigor mortis is, is a thing, so you're not sure from rigor this mortis, vantage point. Rigor mortis happens, happens after. over time, yeah. Correct. Um, but looking at her, she doesn't look dead per se. Okay. But I don't know. Mm. You killed her. She whispers back to you. She is simply stuck. <laughs> she will not travel. This will do. She yeah. cannot travel to see her masters. And how long does this last for? Until such time as someone undoes it. She was just beginning to trust us. Surely you do, did not trust her. I don't trust anyone. As she starts to stride now in her full healed might. Wait, a member of the twelve coming over. Yes. I'll walk over with her. Okay. I, I trust her as much as I trust you. And why would that be? Because I don't trust anyone. That is a failure in you, Gunnar. No, it's not. Look, yes, we're trusting not. the twelve of Gars. Can you revive anyone? How's Gunnar? has given me the ability to make from the mundane, not from the living. If we continue on this journey, if we are to help these dwarves, you need to find someone to help us revive, Ose. Is that a threat? It's not a threat, it's a request. One of the twelve, Parizo, killed her. It's only fair we get her back. We're risking our lives. I will do my best. She risked hers for you. For all of you. I said I would do what I can. It's not good enough. What is it you wish? I want you to promise. Amara, you're making someone promise something that might not be possible. I'm sure the Twelve, if they are as mighty as they seem, will have someone within them that can help. Once life has passed, it's not always so simple to come back. And they are not as mighty as they would have you believe. We are mighty in the arcane, not in the divine. Someone like yourself 
Torum would have clerics, high priests, surely. I go. The reason my magic did not work is that it is magic of the life. And she was not, even as she burned, alive. There's no magic of Edo that can help her. What do you mean? I believe my spell failed because she died a long time ago. There was nothing to bring back. She was right there, Thorim. No soul to bring back. So then it was the wrong spell. It was my mightiest spell. I don't accept that the Twelve can't do anything. I don't accept that. The Twelve? If it was one of your own. Then we would find another. Because we cannot stop to protect one of our own when there are thousands, a million, that need us, our aid. We see the greater good. If we pause to help our own, then others suffer who are not so powerful. Friso had ramblings of Tiamat coming back and saving everyone from the existence of Corvair and the plights that we are currently in. Were you aware of any of this? I do not wish to sound like I'm interrogating you. I, I take your truth to be true enough that you came to warn us. I just am looking for answers. And we, need, and we do need to press on. He had me silent. I confronted him after discovering a portal from the hell where he journeyed back to the material plane <clears throat> I caught him and we exchanged words and we fought and he bested me that is why I came to warn you this dryad or fey creature here. I know not, though I should ask first, what was it that you all saw with her thoughts? I turn to Amara, Thor, and Gunnar. Had enough of this. Let's go and rest. I'm not fighting anything until I rest. I'm My worry right. is if this creature is truly in league with Frieza, I know that she was using the Wayward Forests to transport Frieza to the Wolf Forge. This creature cannot be cannot be let go. She She's will gonna... not be. She is now in stasis. You cannot leave this place until such time as I have let her go, or someone more powerful than the Twelve can find her. I know not what this holds. You know, I bring back out the vial that I put the memory in. Some memory of hers that shows Frizio, Frizio fighting the Lord of Blades. Maybe you can make more sense of this when I give it to Mel. Well, let's try. Chorizo. Chorizo, yes. She takes it, but then she pockets it. Whatever memory she seems to have concocted, I would not take seriously. We need to rest. Where is the safest place to rest from here? Beyond the wall. 
there is a plaza. In there, no one lives. But there are homes that you can rest there safely. I have explored some of this. Perhaps with Rook's help, you can lead the way. For a time, I can be with you. We are looking for a city. The source of the Red Death. Tell Ganel. This place, Tell Nakel, is secret. A drow city that has been said in myth to abide beneath even dwarven mines. Telling Nakel is dark. The drow are many and they came from there to lay siege here. As you can see, they have allies. Dried spiders, grand and under their control. Their aim is true with bolt and bow and spell. We must be cautious. But when we find the city, Tel Nakel will hold the key. The original, the mother matron, and here we will save them, the dwarves, from the Red Death. We cannot allow it to travel anymore, further than this. Lead on. Um. But you must rest. Here. This chamber here. No, beyond. beyond. Shall we? Yes. I'm ready to go. I'm ready too. I pilfered this off of your once friend's body, and I pulled out the contents of the equipment that I took, the rings and things. I wouldn't ask more of you, but if any of this is magical, can assist my friends, please let me know. And ask her to identify any of it. If she can. Knowing him well. You intend to keep them. They are of the arcane order. They are the property of the twelfth. Then and one of the twelfth attacked us. There should be recompense. In fact, this isn't the first time we've had to fight one of your messes. Count Babby. Babby. I simply mentioned, I remember um, punching her in the head too. <laughs> well, I hope that that is the last. That is all I can promise. But you can control that. I know. And I'm deeply sorry that you have had to be mixed with this horrible thing. Truly. So, as a token, you can keep them as a small gesture. And she puts her hand on your hand, Rook. And simply folds your hand, your fingers over the items and says, and says, keep them. The three gold bands with the single jewels are simply for safe, for keeping or for selling. They are mundane. Okay. Yep. The ring with many jewels, each jewel has a particular spell that it can cast. And as 
a bonus action during your turn, providing you're wearing the ring. I will send you some spells that you can cast. Any any other questions? When are we leaving? This is taking a while. Let us go. And she nods to you and holds the cloak over her person a little more tightly with both hands as she moves fairly swiftly it just doesn't seem to take the ground beneath her as um, as strenuously as everyone but Rook you all find it a little bit hard to keep up with how dense this web is beneath your feet but Rook you jump and hop and skip from one small spot to another and manage to avoid the majority of that of that stickiness that holds you down. I'll shadow step if it makes it easier. Yep. And <laughs> Amara simply appears one here and there. As you're walking, as soon as you, as soon as you start walking, over the bridge of lava, looking behind you to this tree with probably about 10 or 20 apples on it and a dryer that's sticking out of it. This ground littered with bodies attacked and devoured by spiders. You feel the familiar critter, critters coming up your ankles of very tiny spiders of different blacks and yellows and reds and you sort of <laughs> shoo them off and then they go and they start crawling back if you stay in one place a bit too long. Can I ask a weird question? Yes. Are any of these spiders worthwhile keeping for poisons? <laughs> worthwhile keeping for? Poisons? Make a nature check as you're stepping here and there and sort of trying to make... Or being considerate, maybe even for kips. Uh, sorry? Maybe even for kips. For Kips, sure. Ooh, that's good. Uh, nature? Nature. Uh, 23? 23. Okay. There are about... Well, there is one particular species of spider mm. that you identify with this thorax on the back, which is completely yellow. This dark sickly yellow and you are particularly avoiding touching the back but you pick up while well, you very deftly kill one of them it's a spider probably that's about the size of your thumb mm. and there are plenty of them around um, the particular venom that comes from these spiders um, they're called Valina, the Valina 8 and they are originated from the south but they do like colder weather and their poison can be inflicted by wounding so you don't have to apply it to a weapon and you understand that this would do an extra 1d4 poison damage and potentially poison um, the creature that it hits and the DC on that will be a, an 11. Would I understand if anything is... Edible? Oh, uh, well, yeah, for antidotes? Oh, for antidotes. Yeah. You don't come across any, any spiders with antidote properties, Yeah. but you do find a few non-toxic oh, spiders which you feel like would be or might be um, a good meal for for, for Kips, but you haven't seen him eat spiders, but you picked them up anyway. You probably collect about 20. Go on. Spiders. <laughs> <laughs> Not for you, obviously. Obviously. I don't know, unless you eat them, I don't know. That's rude. 
Um, thank you. I'll put them in the air. I'll chuck them in the box. Yep. Yuck. Okay. There's only two left, so I now have 22 bugs. Correct. Hey. Christmas yeah, bugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you walk, <laughs> and as soon as you find yourselves on the other side of that lava river, and you're making your way towards this massive wall that has this natural rock of dark grey and brown and directly in front of you a partially a partially destroyed massive double doors with metal inlay um, that has um, engravings uh, and carvings of different different uh, faces of dwarves and, and bodies of dwarves that are in poses of, of victory um, and different crafts and arts achieved as well you see um, in the distance in the darkness probably even another 60 feet away that there are in these in this door partially destroyed um, ma- uh, uh, stone masons um, jewel crafters miners so all these different uh, specialities that these dwarves are renowned for bankers um, even um, animal handlers as well, all engraved in, in this wood. Um, and these unusual blue lights that are still lighting up small pockets of the, of the wall. But as you get closer to them, you suddenly feel a quick familiar sight. And then it happens. As soon as you see these beings webbed up the ghostly images that you saw in many places dragon's crown uh, the (coughs) Dalcor other places that just simply appear and disappear these blue lights in fact are some um, ghostly people and as that as you notice that you then see some start to appear around you once again silent walking back and forth older men young halflings wearing different cloaks clothing some for battle some with this large wound within it a centaur a thrycreen moves past a dwarf and they all just appear and then disappear and you see an older man a proud looking old elf of Valinar look towards you Rook and just give you a bit of a nod and just walk past and dissipate into a blue smoke I'm going to turn to Melestra and say how long has this place been deserted? A couple of weeks, perhaps. Longer. But... It is not known how these creatures have come about. After the calamity, they have simply come and gone. A, ph- a phenomena all around Cover. We do not know how or why these ghosts appear. So these are not the recently vacated head inhabitants? No. Have you seen them before? No. Just yeah. Wondering. I've seen ghosts before, but I didn't know. These are the same. They have no purpose. They simply appear and then disappear again. Whether or not they have ever made contact with someone or someone has tried to make contact with them. We have tried, but nothing has worked. It's a familiar story from the 12th. 
I'm going to cast... So, I don't think I've done this before. I'm going to close my eyes and try and expand my mind outwards and try and feel them with my Detect Thoughts spell and see if they have thoughts. Okay. <clears throat> as you expand your mind and close your eyes as you walk, trying your best not to only focus on the spell but what's in front of you as well. You hear them. A voice after a voice. A thought after a thought. And you almost feel overwhelmed. You're not invaded or you don't it's not a shock feeling, it's a, a slow build-up of emotion. And at the peak of the wave that should normally crash down and drop your stomach with either sadness or happiness or anxiety or excitement or violence, you simply feel all of them all at once as they all stop they all stop and they all simply turn their heads towards you blank faced And then, the room on the other side of the lava river starts to fill as figures of ghostly blue appear. More and more of them. And you get this sudden, you all get this sudden fear of a familiar crowd in a stadium that you were almost overwhelmed and crushed with but these figures are well evenly spaced out not coming towards you simply still and looking silent are they looking directly at directly me? at you so then, well, are you saying this she stopped and she turns worryingly towards you gonna what did you do <laughs> stop stop it <clears throat> i can't and, and, and whatever spell I'm gonna say something to you we do not know I'll just turn to the closest one whatever that that is is it like a... you turn and you see this middle aged uh, halfling woman um, that's looks like she has been travelling for some time with this backpack of of um, rations and, and bedroll and she has a staff and she looks confidently confident sorry and then she looks at you with this proud look so do they all have the same expression or are they no, varied very okay. and that's how you feel like that of almost crashing mix of emotions Emotion. seem to happen okay. do you have a name speaking to me yeah I'm Gunner what's your name I was worried it was it still is you are kind but I have passed on I'm you're not. Th you're still here. You haven't gone anywhere. 
Where do you think you are? Um, we're in the Mora Hole. Where do you think we are? She simply smiles at you. Look beyond. And we will help you. And she falls back and her blue ghostly image fades. It only lasts for a minute, so that probably the yep. detect thoughts would have passed. As the spell fades, you all watch as these figures start to normalize again as they should and as they are and simply move away and past you and disappear and you are once again after maybe 15 seconds of observing this enactment alone again and Malestra simply looks towards you gonna Stop it. It's, en it's ended. They're gone. We do not know what this is. Where are we? Yeah, but I don't think it's bad. Well, if they I were going to do have, something... I wouldn't have heard that, hey. Huh? I wouldn't have heard that, hey. Take back what I said. That's Rewind okay. 30 seconds. That's all right. Oh, you didn't hear them speaking? No. Just me. What did they say? <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, not a lot. Um, we just talked. You spoke to them? Yeah. What? Her, her name is Mori. Mori, I missed it. <laughs> she said it really quickly and, and she hushed. It was really Wari. quiet. Mori. Hmm? Mori. Mori. Um, <laughs> I think that's a, a gnomish name. Halfling. Halfling name. Oops. Um, she said something about looking beyond for help, and they will help us, or help me. I'm. That wasn't clear. Um, I don't know what that means yet. It's unstable magic. After the calamity, many things started to happen. I'm touched by the calamity. I know. Maybe that's why they spoke to me. Perhaps. And perhaps not to us. But it is best not to delve into the dangers that the calamity has left. It's it may have gone very wrong. That's all I have. Then use it course. I would not try that again. How far are we from shelter? Just through the doors. And she continues. <laughs> she leads you into and past, and you have to cl clamber and climb over the, the rubble that's um, blocking a good half of the, of the doorway leading in. The door itself, a good 25 feet wide and you go th as you go through this doorway you're greeted with a an absolutely massive plaza in front of you pillars rise up thick and wide in in a in a distance that is almost unfathomable to create by by human hands they are very evenly spaced out in a um, in a triangle shape and they rise up hundreds of feet in the air holding up whatever canopy in the darkness is above you and it is silent and you can see on the very on the very far left what looks to be what could only be described as the largest caved-in doorway in existence. 
a gigantic entrance to the capital of the Raw Holds, Krona Peak. As you can see, however, that this place in front of you has been the scene of a fairly large battle against the pillars there are scores of dwarves and drow and you can see a little ways off the first viewing of a huge spider its massive body upside down its legs rising up and folded around itself as you can see spear and bolt of, of dwarves within it as it lies dead you can see these dwarves have built barricades and and large makeshift looking very quickly made like guard houses and um, and protections against what looked to be an invading force but it seems as though at the very front at the very entrance to the mural holds this this doorway that has been caved in it seems as though the dwarves have made a barricade to not let the drow out and you can see this last stand of a massive like sandbags and um, shields that have been broken and piles of rock that some have been pushed aside with um, with all manner of broken weapons starting to rust and um, bodies just strewn all over the shop this slight smell of decay filling the air finally a safe place yeah <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing here anymore. No one will intrude. The drow have moved on. And the dwarves here are dead. Should we head into the city or make our rest here? To the right is where homes and shops used to used to operate. You can find a warm bed in there. <clears throat> it's only another five minute walk. Is there like a central section of this plaza, like a central feature? Like a fountain or a statue or something of that nature? In the, in the plaza, beyond, right. on the right. Oh, sorry, that was more of a DM question, but I didn't know we haven't been there yet. But when I get there, that's what I'll be looking for. Um, yeah, there is. Um, you, you understand that Moradin, being the main god of the dwarves, has a, an enormous um, statue um, in the, in, in the centre of Kronovik, and, and you imagine that's where uh, Malestra described. Sorry, what? So I'm keen to go. Go where? To these houses. To okay. Rest. I'm so uncomfortable with this place. <laughs> yes, it is very uh, It's a very unnerving place. Is there anything dead around me on the ground? Make an invest investigation check. You said, is there anything dead anything around you? Anything at all, you? like a bit of armor or something. I'm looking for something to just kick for a <laughs> Oh, sure. Go just for some it. dead armor. Do you say dead? That's a 19. A 19? Yeah. You find so much dead armor. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted something to kick for effect. Uh. You look, yeah, you look down and you see a dwarf. Um, you see a Who very... <laughs> and a, you kick him. Well, yeah. a very well-placed black crossbow bolt serrated through an eye socket. Oof. So quite dead. But then as you look, look closer and then you look around to make sure you're not the eyes aren't tricking you. These dwarves have red blotched skin. Skin peeling off, blisters. 
and scabs all along and you've seen this before these dwarves have had been <laughs> suffering the red death and so this last stand you imagine might have been for two reasons one to let the drow know that the dwarves are certainly stout but also perhaps a desperation in there to to try and help themselves I'm uh, I'm going to point out so see, they were all infected and I agree, we should not stand in this place any longer. We don't know for how long the infection will. Can you cleanse it? Not this whole field. Try. No, I know that I can't do that. They're already dead, what does it matter? Disease lingers where death remains. I'm gonna walk ahead off to where she said the house is well. Thorum, if you're to stop this Red Death, should you not cleanse it wherever you find it, whether it's on a living creature or not? It makes a good point, so I'm going to take out my mace. And as I hold it up, do I get a sense of anything? I can relate from check. He's a big boy. He's a big boy. Was it a natural one? It was a natural one. one. <laughs> Never again. That tracks. That tracks with Thorum. We're going to send you another one, guys. So whoever wins, what, what, that we're one. We're cursing out. the no, you. We're rolling the ones out. That's all we're doing. Yeah. We're getting rid of the ones. <laughs> with your divine strength. <laughs> you dropped the mace. <laughs> the mace in front of you. <laughs> unlike... The, the scene at King Baronel's um, rooms where you cured the, the sovereign of the illness, nothing seems to happen and you don't even really understand the why behind it. Whether or not this creature, the dwarf, has perished, whether the, the, the disease lingers on after death, like Gunnar has said, you're not certain as to why the, the mace didn't activate for you. Performance, performance issues. <laughs> I'm gonna turn to him and say, "I don't think there's any life here left to save." That's and not okay. What do you mean? That's not what I was meaning. Um, you want to be rid of the disease? Yeah. I don't think that's how this works. Okay. I guess I don't know much about diseases. A fire, fire will cleanse this place. That's true. And the mace will save the living. I'm going to take on after Amara. Okay, Malestra also just <laughs> strides forward as you all are, <laughs> are um, taken aback a little bit by the, by the recent battle. But you follow on. I'll, I'll run up ex- next to Forum. Um, Forum. Forum, should we burn this place? When we leave, perhaps. I mean, it's mostly stone, so probably won't even do much, but... I don't know, I think perhaps... One of the... What was that? Did you hear that? <laughs> Someone kicked an arrow over. What was that? That's Thorum, another that dwarf. <laughs> perhaps one of the twelve... Masters of the arcane arts could summon a fire... Great enough to cleanse this place. The Lester turns at that and just gives you a bit of a nod and says... Probably yes, for the best. Yeah. But, uh, and if they can't, they'll get us to do it. Yeah. I'm sure we'll have to lay out all the firewood for it before something. So. Do you say that out loud, Amara? Okay. <laughs> so, um, just to be clear, are we staying in the city or are we leaving? As I understand it, we're resting in the, on the outskirts before pushing deeper into the city to confront the drought. Melestra, do you think that they're in the city still? Is that where we're going? Or are we going underneath the city? I believe underneath. How do we get down there? The drow made their way up. We need to find out how. I don't know if that's... Okay. 
So we're just gonna climb down their tunnels? We're gonna rest, is what we're gonna do, Gunner. Okay. Well, yeah. I understand what you're saying. We should be discreet. We took a whole army of dwarves, a gesture, and that was not enough to contain us. Even the five, plus one, will not be enough. Of half. Yeah. You get to eventually pass through an enormous set of stairs, stone and still quite chipped but well made, as there seems to be, even with the years of, of living of dwarves here, um, and the history of the dwarves making this their capital, there is almost nowhere to the stone here as you stride upstairs into what looks to be extremely tall, very thin doorways, about 30 of them, side by side, about 10 foot apart from each other, there's stone, natural stone in the middle of each, um, making the path between this room and the next, where there's actually a little bit more light, torches in the distance. But as you pass through these large doors, um, Malestra beckons you to stop. She turns to you, Omar, and she says, What's the power of the Twelve? And she turns and she moves her hands forward and back. And as you can see, as she does this, you see small fireballs move quickly like a juggling between her hands and then her arms suddenly <laughs> become a flame and those flames become larger and larger as her arms simply move in this dance of heat and brightness and she screams out Aah! and you see her entire upper body just become a light but it's of her doing and a stream of fire and, and um, power just emanates from her and she casts Firestorm and this powerful fire spell in, uh, just twists and molds its way through and past pillars and just like a water, like a flowing river, it just moves past each and every single um, visible pillar and it embeds itself within the bodies of the dead and you watch as they flicker and start to flame and the room be the room former becomes brighter and brighter as you feel this heat and you have to step back a moment to just stop and and the smoke and the acrid um, um, burnt body smell reaches your nostrils and it becomes a bit overwhelming and and it, it just becomes a bit ugh, um, uh, very unusual and very off and she finishes the spell and the, and the entire room is now aglow <coughs> full room can do that too I heard you just did you it's true. absorb this energy from the lava it was on my do uh, sorry I hope she found that as a joke <laughs> And she turns and simply walks through. <laughs> I don't follow. You make your way into the upper level of two large square plazas with steps that go down into um, almost pits into the earth with a sandiness. And in the middle of each of these pits, large as they are, you assume looking at the broken carts and the uh, remains of other dwarves and, and uh, weapons and, and rotting fruit that are within these pits that they might have been small marketplaces um, that people might have gathered to, uh, to sell and, and buy wares. And on the outside where you're standing, the level you're on, um, there is a path, a stone path that leads around the square into another square 
and around the outside of that seemed to be open doors, broken, vandalized, or looted. And you can see small torches still flickering from within some of these homes. Thorn. Which one seems to have the sturdiest doors? The sturdiest? There are still some intact doors, some actually shut, some slightly ajar, pretty heavy all round. Um, the closest to you is probably about uh, 20 feet away. I'll go and try that one. Okay. It's easily opened. Um, it seems unlocked, uh, but it seems intact as well. And it's a double story building with these small stone verandas that look out onto the, the pit. And um, this has just the one torch within it. Looking up at a sign, it, it looks like it might have been a winery or somewhere uh, because it has a, a bunch of grapes on this sigil on the sign with a small glass next to it. And you do have this, this smell of off, off grapes coming from within. Um, I'm going to go in a little bit. Is there a lamp holder on the wall or anything like that? Um, on the outside? On the inside. On the inside. You open the door and within you see a small room with a, with a sto stone staircase leading upward. All of these homes on the outside are embedded in the rock and so it's it's a bit warmer in here and you do look around a moment and you do find a sconce good i'm gonna touch the the holder of that sconce and just cast light on it leaving the torch within it <laughs> it brights up ever brightly see? um hmm? you see that's what i say to molestra <laughs> oh i see okay molestra just looks at you and gives you a bit of a bit of a focused look and, and goes into this uh, this home and within you see this beautiful carpet with a stone table with chairs around it there are wine glasses some spilt over others still full of this beautiful dark red liquid dusty not dusty no they don't they don't look like it's been too long since but on the chairs there are two bodies both with just littered black crossbow bolts um, in the chest um, a dwarven male and female next to each other and they seem to be holding hands oh. I say the dragon oh. I searched them. what do they got you're searching it? Yeah. I'm Make an investigation check. I'm leaving check. the room. You so leave the room? Yeah. Uh, that's a 13. 13. As you walk over, trying not to move them too much from their, from their last resting places, um, still keeping with that respect, you take your time and you do find that within, they seem to have a... Um, a set of like a like small pouch that's uh, clinking and within there are um, all around about 17 silver pieces and then about 30 uh, gold pieces between them um, you find on their hands uh, um, just small copper bands so small rings um, uh, I'll leave the rings on their hands Jeez. Okay. they, they <laughs> do also have um, they that's also right. have <laughs> copper and silver Thor, necklaces on guy. Silver and copper necklaces on about well, three over yeah, right. over around the neck. Yeah. I will leave that as well. I'm not going to take the jewelry out, um, and then I'll move them both respectfully. Is there like a respectfully? Is there like a closet or something? I know it sounds bad, but I can't. I can't throw them out on the street, and I don't. No one wants to sleep next to them, so. Is there a large cupboard or something of that nature? You haven't checked upstairs yet, but on the ground floor of this small establishment, there's just the stone table. Behind is a cabinet where there looks to be other wine glasses and such. The glass on these has been shattered. Um, to the left of it, there seems to be some shelves um, and a small bar where there seems to be um, what would be a, just a serving place where someone would bring out wine and such uh, for the for the visitors and then there's that staircase out and at the back that leads upstairs can i see thorum searching yes thorum what are you doing i'm looking for some clue of this place and who these people were and also 
This gold's not gonna help them. I throw the money purse. That's not what I mean. You look like you're looking for something, though. No, I need to move these bodies out of here before we go to sleep. Because it'll, they'll attract vermin, etc. And there's no point in leaving gold for the dead. Was the ground outside just dirt? The ground outside at the bottom, where, where the marketplace would be in both squares, was dirt. But then it's a actually a quite well made marble um, on the actual on on that walkway leading around the homes uh, and other establishments on on the top. Is this a two story home? This one in particular is okay. yes. And do they have like a like a yard, a backyard area, like sheer rock? Sheer rock. Yeah. I can maybe help you bury them. Yes. Yes, that's Would that, that be more respectful? We could take them next door. We're going to walk past an awful number of people. Do you think we should take particular care to bury these two? As opposed I mean, we're using their home, so it's the most we could do for them. You make a, you make a good point. Very well. I make a lot of good points. I must admit, if we're going to waste our time digging up holes to bury all the dead around here... You're not doing anything. I'm going to do it. No, no. It's, uh... We're not going to dig it with shovels. Should. You're going to dig it with your hands? I have ways of doing it. In a manner of speaking, yes. Uh, Thorum, I can do it. It's fine. You can do both? Yeah. Okay, that's good. I can only make one hole and that would be very respectful. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> um, you just carry them. Alright, I'm going to do that. Carry them out the, out the back, out the front. Wherever you think is best. If you're, you're performing the right, aren't That's you? True. That's true. Um, Where would the Edo find them? In the backyard. <laughs> there, there is no backyard. There's a is, there, is, there, is, there no, is there a rear courtyard or anything? Or is it just built into the rock? It's built into the rock. Then out the front, then, I guess. You should just stone shape. Yeah. Put them in the walls. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> then, yeah, I'll pick them up one at a time, respectfully, and take them mm -hmm. out the front. Okay, let's do it. So I'm assuming Here? I just see two people walk out with some bodies. Yeah. Well, one at a time. One yeah. at a time. Here? Yeah. yeah, here. Here's fine. In front of their home. Um, I'll cast... Um, <clears throat> I'll reach out with my hand, um, and the earth will start to... sort of like... wobble and move. And yep. it starts to excavate itself out as I cast... Um, malt... Mm, Mold grave. Mold earth. Mold earth. <laughs> <laughs> so I will I will create a um, six foot deep, six foot well, four foot long grave. How tall are they? Isn't that they're about they're about four and a half feet. Okay, I make it five. I'll make it an even five. Yeah. Um and I don't make too much room, that'll be feel a little bit I'm gonna be cozy and anyway. Um yeah. Right. Like the door door. Door. Do they need coffins or anything? No. Okay. No. She's just like... <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll let them in, and then uh, I'll say... Um, Should I cover them first, or after, before or after you do the service? Uh, cover them first. I say... As you have given us our home, as you have given us your home, we will give you rest. In Edo's light, may you always be blessed. And then I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna go back inside. Is there any papers or anything like that? There are a few on the, on the bar. Are they addressed? Is there any name? Yeah, so there's, there's two, ma two names. Um... Lutorus and Doldor. Lutorus and Doldor. Dumbledore. The um, the parchments are bills that are made out to them um, for just some purchasing of wine. Um, so there's it, it's it's written in a way that you'd assume that they do buy they're a buy and sell. Um, or a, a trade type of establishment for, excuse me, for um, alcohol. So I'm going to go back outside and then 
just on the ground. It's a stone ground, right? Where we, yeah. Right on top, I'm going to slap the ground and use stone check to make an inscription. So I'll say, the Taurus and Doldor. Yes. The Taurus and Doldor. May you rest for all those who couldn't. Okay. And it's so engraved. Mm. And as the bodies are moved on. Am I just outside with Gunner? Is yep. there anyone else out here with me? The, you all are. Right. I'm not with them. I'd what be, are you doing? I want to be on the roof. starting to look for like my own little place to sleep in. I okay. don't want to sleep with everyone else. Okay. Are you looking for anything in particular secure wise or um, you don't really mind? In all honesty, as long as the door is not missing, <laughs> then that's fine. Yep. There is a There are a couple of locked doors. Um, windows though have been smashed open and uh, and you can see within it there are unfortunate robbery and, and people and, and furniture that's uh, moved over bodies inside there's really not a, probably a next door yep if that helps um, if it's a, it's a private home this one the next door to mm. the wine place yeah, yeah it does it look broken into um, the door is it open um, there's a piece missing from the bottom of the door, but otherwise it's it's Can okay. Can it be closed if yep. I try? Well, uh, let's go in. Okay. Close the door behind me. All right. Yeah, easy. Um, I'm going to go back inside. Is there anything... Is there anything you think we should do before gunning? Is there anything you think else that we should do before we rest? With the um, people? No, just in general, at all. Should we keep a watch? I think so. I can go first. Right. I'm not that tired. Whoever takes watch should stand out here, out the front of both of these houses. I think Amara is sleeping in that one. No point to the oh. She's not in our house? No, I think she wants some space. Okay. Should we bury them as well then? Nah, she can do that if she wants to. Also, I don't think there's anybody in there. Most of these, most people will fled these dwellings. I think these last two. Uh, probably there were the old people in the end of that Titanic movie that just yes, in bed. Exactly that. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll take first watch. Mm. Okay. Don't sleep too heavy, because I will wake you if anything happens. I'll take the second. If you all must rest, I can take the watch. You're not taking my watch. Yeah. You can take the third watch? I don't no, know. I can watch for an whole eight hours. While you rest. What about you? I can still gain the benefits of a good rest. I don't know what that means. Alright, I'm going to sleep then. What? Why? Because I'm out. Are you... <laughs> Sorry. Are you a robot? That was wonderful. Yes. <laughs> no, I gathered these two, these three potions of watch for the rest. Maybe we should save them for a time when we really need them. Uh, which is now. You all need a good night's nice rest. Don't, don't you? I'll still benefit. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll go and find a spot in the house, um, and as I curl up in whatever corner I find, I'm going to cast Sending. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn to my last and say, perhaps you should sleep next door with Amara. <laughs> we will not want to uh, speak to you, but it would be better if there are two of us in each dwelling, in case something creeps up on us in the night. Everyone could please hydrate. Well, thank you very much. Oh, I, I, have, I have hydrated all of this water, but... Thank you very much. I will do that. And she moves <laughs> over to Amara's door. Um, you see her disappear behind it. Amara, you do hear uh, the door to this abode open and close. You found your way upstairs where the downstairs... Sorry, it's just one floor. Apologies for this one. So... Um, on this one floor, there is a um, like a, a front room, which had a lounge 
had one because it's all ripped up mm -hmm. um, and uh, like a small shelf on the left which had the remnants of refreshments um, carpeted as well and beyond through a doorway an archer doorway of, of stone uh, there was bed there were beds beyond that as well as sort of a lavatory type of thing so you found your way into a bed um, this particular house was. I'd a probably stay on the couch. If that's yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. So well, you do then. Couch. You do. You do hear and see Malestra come in, but silently she doesn't even seem to look at you as she moves beyond um, the archway into the room with the beds in it. If she completely ignores me, I will also give her the same courtesy. Okay. Cold shot. Um. Culture. I'm gonna like sit down and I'm gonna just kind of start going. Scenari, now would be a really great time to show up. That'd be good. I would like to speak to you. What were you doing, Solon? Um, before we go to bed, I'm going to. Do you remember when we were in, at my temple and I had a little trinket made? Mm -hmm. A gold coin? So I'm going to pull out a gold coin with three dragon heads, three gold dragon heads on one side and flames on the other. I'm going to look at Gunnar and I'm going to say, Gunnar, quietly, and say, Gunnar. So, there's a very good chance we're going to die down here in this cave. Or at least some of us. Don't say that again in front of Amara because she'll get terribly sad about all of it. She doesn't like to talk about our pretty much guaranteed do. You. <laughs> no, she pretty much sa says that all the time. It's true. I'm not here, am I? No, you're outside. I'm outside watching. It's nothing. But you have the ability to fly, and to teleport, and to transport. And so there may come a time when... I can't, I can't really teleport. Well, you can move quick, quicker than the rest of us. And there may come a time when you're able to save yourself and the rest of us are not. Uh, before we left Shan, 150 riders in three different groups left from the temple. And this is a token which marks you as a friend of dragons, which you are the greatest friend of dragons I've ever met who was not themselves a dragon or evil. <coughs> as Kip stands to show. So if you show this to anyone from the temple, it was a mark of friendship. There's no greater way I can vouch for you. I don't have that. Easy. <laughs> Thank I you. I give them to you. I said, don't get it mixed up with all the rest of your coins. I don't know why I didn't make it different somehow. <laughs> Poor design, I guess. I'm gonna go to sleep. Yeah, I've I've, I've got about one thousand eight hundred of them. Yeah, I keep them. <laughs> this one looks a bit different. Keep them separate. <laughs> all right. Um, I'd like to cast sending. Um. I'll wait till Thorum starts snoring before I cast. Sure. It doesn't take long. And the... Uh, You're done. Yeah. I'm going to speak to... Oberdin. The ghost of the morning... Have you ever spoken to them before? I have. That's it. I'm not gonna run. Alright. Go to bed after this? Straight away. Oh, I'll feed a couple of spiders to kids. Right in my book, really hurriedly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kips is extremely gra uh, gracious for the spiders and eats them hungrily, and falls asleep with you as quickly. <laughs> I did not expect that. Do that thing where you like you're sitting down and then you stand up and then you walk around a little bit and then you sit down again. Sonari 
watches you <laughs> as you pace and just shift uncomfortably. Didn't expect what? Uh, the recent events. Aren't you supposed to know these things? Not everything. I'm sorry if that's a disappointment. It is. I can't see into the future. I'm not asking you to see into the future, but I am continuously told to trust and just keep trusting and trust and then I trust everyone and then they're evil or they die and I'm really sick of it I'm really tired of this and I don't understand why Ilyana would put me on this path I can understand the dreaming dark but I can't understand being here and watching my friends nearly die and watching someone actually die. If this is the path of light and I get the shadows and all of that bullshit that I've been fed my entire life, but this is not shadows, this is darkness. This is complete and utter darkness. The way of the shadows is not what you're experiencing. It is what you are learning. What you are experiencing is loss. Coping with loss is difficult. Ilyana teaches that one must cope before one sees the, the light at the end of the tunnel, the good that comes from loss, the peace. Have you coped yet, Amara? When do I get peace, Sonari? You will get peace when you learn that loss does not, ne does not always mean the end. It's really easy to say you're standing there. I'm standing here. It is easy for me to say. You have not Hoped since the temple. What am I supposed to do? When did you reach out to her last? When did she reach out to me last? If you are looking for balance in that regard, you must remember that she is still falling. She is still being elusive to the darkness? Or do you not remember and have been within yourself for too long? I remember. There is always a reason. You are not, you are not a selfish person, Amara. I know that, and she does as well. Your loss is great. But, learn how to overcome it. It is enveloping you. And 
if it envelops you, more and more deaths will follow. Once you learn to cope with this, the light will shine. Feel not for your own loss only, but for the loss your friends have experienced. They have lost Farisa. They have lost Osei. Do you not think of them? Yes, I think of them. And it's how are so they coping? It's so hard to think of them when I'm watching them wrap them up and shove them in a bag. It is difficult. It is difficult not to scream at them and just walk away. And for that I am proud. Because they need you. There's no one better to shadow jump. To become in a place where you were once not a moment before. They should appreciate that more. But. While Ilyana falls. And she walks out to a small torch and with two fingers picks the light from this torch a small candle moves into her grasp and she holds it the candle or the sconce not burning anymore but this small light into her, in, in her hands and it beams a little brighter she hands, she holds it out to you. Take it. My task here for you is to help you learn. This peace, this gift from Ilyana the last that you will see before she will either fall forever or before the Dalcor are no more will hopefully help you. <clears throat> Do you think I could have saved her? Be honest. Amara. Yes. And with that answer, learn. And she smiles at you and she walks up to you and with a very warm an inviting embrace. She hugs you so strong. I'm so proud of you. Thanks. Make a perception check, please. Look. <coughs> As everyone sleeps or meditates. Uh, eight. Okay. The first four hours pass <clears throat> and as you close your eyes and just instinctively close your fist and feel that familiar gift erupt from your hand of a beautiful bow made of metal mm -hmm. and retract it. <clears throat> Practice that over and over again while watching out and listening for anything in the darkness. Nothing. Roll again. Can I do something before I do this? I'll let you do stuff within that eight hours while, um, if you want to do something within that first four, yeah. let me know. Yeah. Um, the first four, is there any dirt or anything that's around? Plenty. I would have liked to just grab a handful, maybe yep. a bit of bone. Um, 
being quite conscious of what I'm supposed to be doing, just like intermittently I'm, I'm visiting what I'm trying to do here. Um, two things, mm -hmm. grinding up the spiders in my mortar and pestle. Cool. With the oils, attempting to make another poison. Yep. Um, and secondly, after the first four hours, um, I pull out a, an object that's quite precious to me and put it near a glass, like awning. Mm -hmm. And if possible, shovel some dirt into it mm -hmm. and kind of lean up against uh, the wall and look at him. Pete, it's been some time since you've seen some sunshine. This small <laughs> cactus. <laughs> Green as ever, with these two large, I guess, sprouts with these small spikes and in a very small pot. I never quite understood if uh, Barclays was ever telling the truth about you, but here I am still trying to look after you. I hope you can uh, endeavor to look after us as much as you looked after Barclays. Uh, let me tell you a story and I periodically come back and forth on watch and fill them in about the events that have happened okay. over the next over the last like I don't know, 72 hours sure <laughs> alright good to know <laughs> and as you continue your story and continue to look out in the la latter four make another perception check please uh 13? 13? Yeah. Probably in the first hour of the second half of your watch. So the fifth hour. Mm. You stop for a moment and close your eyes as you hear a rustling and an echo. And you turn your, your you turn your gaze away from Prickly Pete, the small cactus that has yet to reply to you as Barclays had promised <laughs> and has said it did, and <clears throat> simply observes your comings and goings. But you look over, and at the far end of the second. Squ large square that encompasses this large room you see several drow starting to sort of casually weapons sheathed make their way into that first square beyond and they're in the pit and the pit is actually separated by this large bridge with a small walkway between it. And you, you gather as you look and you are very still. You count five and ten and fifteen <laughs> and twenty. It's fine. I've only got five hit points each. So it's okay. There are about twenty-two drow of different dress there's they're mostly dirty white caped and uh light purple dress with this insect-like armor beneath that's been dyed a dark purple and it's sort of crisscrossed like like plate mail would be or like um like scale mail would be but more like insect-like carapace and some of them are carrying what look to be two-handed scimitars so quite large black looking weapons still steel but quite really like dyed black and wicked looking large crossbows for the majority some of them are wielding double daggers and some even have a small belt with small daggers all around it 
and the, the, their voices are soft, but as a group, they're just talking to each other. What languages do you know? Uh, don't think I know under speech. Under common? Uh, abyssal common, draconic, and infernal. Yeah, you're not sure about what they're speaking, but <coughs> they only make their way to the very first part of that pit. And then they seem to, for the next half an hour, simply look around, pick at any dull looking materials that they can pick up. That one of them picks up an apple and stuffs a munch on it. Um, the other looks and picks up what looks to be like a broken sword a dwar- of dwarven make um, and says something fun to something, someone else who gives a, a slight chuckle. They have beautiful white teeth with this dark skin. And as half an hour passes, they look around for a moment and make their way back the way they came, beyond into what looks to be another room, another large hall beyond that. And they don't seem to see. So they didn't go beyond the bridge, they went backwards? Correct. Okay. Okay. And then for the next part of those eight hours, the last three, go uneventfully. And everyone wakes up, full health, spells, and abilities, back on track. Do we level up? (laughs) (laughs) But do we? (laughs) Shut up. You die. (laughs) You ask, like, it's it's a three-strike rule. Ask three times and die. Just instantly. (laughs) Ada comes down and just... (laughs) (laughs) Ada has Him a pistol? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a crossbow. It's a golden thing. one. So yeah. yeah. He's got like a gold tooth. <laughs> All right. I'm going to, first thing in the morning, teeth, sexy. head out into the sun. Is it sunny? <laughs> there is no light apart from the some very small torches really? around. The cavern is completely... Oh, there's a cavern. Com- yeah, it's yeah, the, sorry, the ceiling mother. is rock. I'm grabbing cactus peak before anyone sees that I had him out. Do that, say that again. I'm grabbing Cactus Peak before I see. So before I know anyone sees him. I think you mean Prickly Peak. Yeah, prickly Peak. Really, prickly Peak, sorry. <laughs> I've renamed him. Oh. That place isn't here. I'm going <laughs> to sit down on this know. nice marble. Because <laughs> it looks good. I'm going to just meditate for a meditate. bit. Meditate? Okay. Yeah. And if anyone tries to interrupt me, I'm going to karate chop them. Okay. All right. Yeah, karate. Be warned. You mentioned like a giant statue. Can I see that from where we are? Yes, so as you, you notice that as you went into sleep and um, you come back out and you do notice it again, it's a centerpiece on the bridge that separates both of these square plazas. And it's massive. It, it rises almost to the ceiling of this gray stone, polished beautifully of a, a warrior looking dwarf, fairly nondescript um just a a middle-aged male with this um carved out plate armor and uh what looks to be a shield on the back and holding in two hands this short sword the head of this statue how big is it Ooh, i'd say it's probably no no that's a that's a good question it's probably the size of, the, of that double story home that you were just sleeping in. Oh, so way more than five by five feet. A little uh-huh. bit more than five by five. It's a massive stone statue. I tried. Fitty by fitty. Yeah, it didn't take a whole day to do what I'm trying to do. <laughs> you moving stone. We'll see what we do. <laughs> is, this, is the statue human or dwarven? Dwarf. Dwarf. Dwar. It's a dwarf. Yeah. Not the thing. Bad. <laughs> you will wake up and you are refreshed. Uh, actually, one thing. No. Yeah. Um, mm. Hey, hey, Rook. Give oh. me a moment to check something. Sorry. Where's my little book? Is um he still exhausted? Um. Yeah. Pretty big kills me. Oh, uh, no. After that long rest, you are no longer exhausted. From that Great. potion, you yeah, a long rest does um, cure that. How many? 
one d4 spider arrows. Oh, oh yes. Oh, Apologies, oh, I forgot. Did I get? Um, you get two vials. Two vials. So two two applications of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Our shivers are uh, just there. And go. Okay. Blah 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 blah. Okay, so do you remember, Rook, that your hit points was reduced? The maximum was reduced by the amount of damage that you took? No, I didn't. I remember that. Yeah, it was like eight or something. Yeah. It so was, my maximum has dropped by eight. Your maximum has dropped by eight, and that has not changed. Okay. Uh, actually, sorry. Yeah, it has changed. Um, it, sorry, you are cured of that. Apologies, I didn't read that next bit. You I just wanted to make sure that was correct. In, in for terms a moment, it's yeah. not okay. Yeah, you are, you are fine. Because I got bitten by a... Oh, say. Um, well, I didn't, I didn't say the body. Um, <laughs> so, um, so that weakness that you had has now dissipated. Dissipated, okay. Cool. Yep. So you are fine. Malestra is seems to be moving from home to home and seems to be just investigating um these these abandoned buildings as well and you can see her in the distance towards the middle of the plaza um having a look around so what are you doing let me start making some breakfast for everyone mm -hmm. with some rations I don't want to start a fire though, really. So it's going to be cold rations. Sorry, folks. Okay. You will have some rations. Can we not cook inside the house? Smoke will come out of the chimney. Well, will it? Is there a chimney or does this. There smoke? is. Okay, smoke will come, and come out of the chimney and we'll be the only house with a fire going in the whole city. I'm still meditating at this point. I hope this is the part where you tell me you have a plan. Right? <laughs> you don't have to eat the cold rations. <laughs> no, I don't have a plan. And you eat cold rations. So you do make you you do have your fill except the Mara, um, and you take roughly about fifteen minutes to eat through that. Kips has a couple more spiders. Uh, always, it does ask to have a couple more spiders with your permission. Of course. Molested eventually comes back she she does carry what looks to be a tray of fruit that seems to still be fairly fresh there's a couple of small bruises in some of the apples there's a couple of pears there's a a, a spiky looking orange type of fruit as well um, that she peels these spikes appear to be quite soft and so she peels that and then eats the flesh um, a watermelon um, and that looks to be okay um, some strips of uh, cured meat as well comes out from from what she's and she sort of hands that out to you as you will she takes her foot feed and says well uh look anything from uh the watch actually yes it seems like there's a 20 man strong scavenger party drow would be on the the bridge just before the pit. And then he seemed to go there and that was all and then cross over into the side of the town. Perhaps best to avoid that area, but it is our destination. We simply have to be soft. Subtle. I will open my eyes and say I can help with that. Any help would be grateful. I'm happy to traverse in there. Hmm? I'm happy to traverse in there, alone if it has to be. No. No, save your spell. I am also rested. And she, as she puts her hand up, she says, I can make us all invisible. For how long? Well, I can continue to cast it. So... If we are not, if it does not break, maybe 15 minutes. How long does it take to get there? I have not been there. 
We are simply here to find the way. Play devil's advocate here. Why would you advocate for devil? Invisibility is good and all, but I'm to understand the drow like to set traps. And the invisibility won't help if we come across something. Well, we just have to make sure that they are not triggered. Broke devil the bad. I know, it's If you are suggesting that you should lead the way, that might not be such a bad idea. Um... I can do some stuff too. Even if we're invisible, it doesn't make us undetectable. Um, so let me just make us a little bit quieter and stealthier. I'll cast past the battle trace. Awesome. Does everyone remember getting a plus 10 to your stealth checks? Boop, 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 boop. I'm going to try and be smug about it as I say it. Okay. So, what else would you like to do? We should move closer to the pit before you use your magic. If we only have, if we only have 15 minutes. I will continue to cast it. Oh, so you can... 15 minutes at a time. Correct. Okay. okay. Shall we begin? Let us avoid traps. The drow. And perhaps... Even the dwarves who may have the illness. Maybe I should lead the way. You're welcome to. I'm... I have learnt how to use my key energy. It's what I use when I fight and when I meditate. Um, to like push poison and disease out of my body. I know the drow like to use poison sometimes, and I, I know there's a lot of disease around here, so maybe if I'm at the front, I can kind of be like a barrier. A pincushion. A meat shield. Yeah, except I won't get hurt because I'm strong. You can deflect missiles. I've seen it. That too. I'm pretty talented. I agree. I suggest I go last because I'm the loudest and the most easily poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll, I'll try and keep two with you, Amara. You can also you be able to see me, heal right? poison, yes. right? Yeah. So if one of us that does get poisoned, yes, that's you'll, another reason I you'll, should go last. Yes. you'll be safe. Yes. To do it. Yes, to heal. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what's the marching order? Amara in front, followed by Rook, I'd close imagine. by. Oh, yeah. How does that work if we're all invisible? We Maybe, can't no see one knows. <laughs> Maybe we should hold on to a rope. We did that once. Didn't go well. What do you mean? The rope isn't made of this. Remember that one time where we walked down into the no the no. mine shaft. Yeah, you all left me behind, and I fell down. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> Not the mine shaft. What are you oh, talking right, about? Yeah. Sorry, by so you have that still. Talking about by so <laughs> yeah. What? No, it's okay. Why do we ha- why do we hold a rope then? You also jump down. Yeah, throwback two. That is an old episode. <laughs> <laughs> that was like episode two. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I lost my snake. Melestra <laughs> Melestra pipes up and she says I can make it so we can see each other. That would be helpful because I can't communicate telepathically unless I can see you. Fair enough. Super helpful. And with that, you feel a particular magic overtake you as you become lighter on your feet with Amara's power and in, impossible to see with mundane eyes by Melestra's magic. And in front of you is a large room that dips underneath a pathway to another marketplace and then beyond to another room halls upon halls and downward you will go but we will need to find out uh, what you, you come across it. next week we have in one two minute minutes. In, in two uh, minutes in, we'll two find out in, two <laughs> <laughs> in next week's episode and we'll leave it there for this evening I will clap this week hey, yeah, what, a, what a good episode Great.
as everyone is uh, is prepared. So thank you so much for watching us, um, and we hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, there's a brand new giveaway live on the Twitter. There was a really great pun that was posted on the tweet. And <laughs> I'm not happy about it. I'll be very um, happy about it. Thank it you. basically <laughs> says, if you remember what the code word is, it says, um, I'll just say that the R is in brackets. How do you pronounce the name again? Yeah. 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 It says it's... Say the name. Fruita? Yep. But take out the R. Fruita? Take out the R. Fruita. Hey, wait, I'm confused. This is quite a good contest you got here. Oh. It's felt that way. Thank you, Michele. <laughs> Jeez. I needed to so see it. So over the head. I needed to see it. It's so, it's light. I don't know. <laughs> That's fine. Like, that was amazing. Who, like who said that? Exclamity for nice. that one. <laughs> good pickup. Good pickup. I, um, yeah. Um, uh, unintentional pun. Enter the giveaway that. Wow. No, just check the Twitter. <laughs> check, just, yeah. Please check the Twitter. Um, check enjoy. Twitter. Wow. Um, uh, and and uh, have an amazing night or, or morning, wherever you are. Um, enter enter our <laughs> lovely giveaway, and we hope you win. Um, and that's it from me. Shall we? Shall we say good, our goodbyes? Goodbye, everybody. Au revoir. See you next week. See you next week, everybody.